Yeah, yeah. welcome to the uh, 2020, what is it, five selectmen's meeting. Join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. It's the 26th. It's my day off. 26th, yes. <laughs> Making mistakes. So we're going to start with public comment tonight. Um, anyone wishing to speak, please join us at the podium. Good evening. Good evening, Jay. Hi, everybody. I'm Jay Diener, and tonight I'm here representing the um, uh, Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance, otherwise known as Shea. Um, I have a couple of things to share with you. Um, the first one is that two weeks ago we had a FloodSmart roundtable meeting um, in Hampton, uh, and this was for residents, and uh, we had the state's representative from Homeland Security Man Emergency Management come and talk to us about the Hazard Mitigation Assistant Grant Program. We had about 50 people in attendance at that roundtable discussion group. And at the end of it, we did a survey and we asked people a number of different questions about their thoughts and feelings about flood-related issues and the funding of mitigation-related issues in Hampton. And I think the most notable, one of the most notable things that came out of that is about a quarter of the people in attendance said that if there were funding available, um, they would be interested in learning more about how they could access that funding to elevate their structures. So you've got a pretty significant portion of the population here that's interested in pursuing these federal funding uh, sources um, through FEMA. Um, I know the town manager is convening a meeting to start to talk about that process. I know you folks have had a presentation um, about two months ago about this process, so I'm just here to give you an indication of the fact that uh, there are a lot of townspeople who are very interested in this opportunity, in this process, and anxious to hear what the town is going to do to help them avail themselves of this opportunity. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk to you about is also related to the Seabrook Hampton Estuary Alliance, and this is a photo workshop that we're hosting this Wednesday evening, the 28th, and it is going to be at the Hampton Falls Town Hall starting at 7 o'clock. We also have a National Estuaries Week photo contest with cash prizes. Um, and so this workshop is going to be in advance of that, uh, of that contest. People are welcome to bring their phones, their smartphones or their cameras and learn tips and tricks about photography. And you can learn more about uh, both the workshop and the, um, uh, the contest and about the presentation on the hazard mitigation grants all at the Seabrook Hampton Estuary Alliance web website, which is Shea, S-H-E-A, number four, N-H. Dot org. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ralph Fatello. I'm the uh, past commander of American Legion Post 35. It just occurred to me as I saw the calendar. Uh, it was 50 years ago today oh. where five National Guard Guardsmen were killed in Vietnam. Uh, our Sergeant, our Command Sergeant Major John Bobnick was a member of that unit. So 50 years ago today, Five National Guardsmen were killed in Vietnam on their way home. Oh. I just saw the calendar and it just dawned on me. I'm here as more of a, a public service announcement for our annual Hit the Beach, the American Legion Hit the Beach. Yep. This is our 12th annual event where we have veterans from the Wounded Warriors, uh, New England Disabled Sports, and the Manchester VA. We have already mm -hmm. signed up 80 veterans showing up. On Friday, awesome. we've moved the time from nine to three to eight to two due to the high tides, uh, and right now we've got a we've got a real decent swell running. It's ceiling high out there, but by Friday they're calling for waist high waves, which is perfect for these guys. And uh, uh, you know, it's one of those events where if you've seen it and witnessed it, it's one of it, it's just inspirational, invigorating to see these veterans, some who have missing limbs, mm -hmm. a lot of them su suffering from PTS. Yeah. And uh, it's just a great, a great event that we, that we do in all the local surf shops. You guys are involved, <laughs> the, the, the town, the state, uh, 
Hampton Fire Department, Police Department, they fly the big garrison flag out there. And uh, stop me if you've heard this before, where I talk to these guys every year because the whole shark thing, um, people want to know if there's sharks out in the water. So I always have them just walk down to the water's edge, stick your finger in the water and taste it. If it's salty, there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> However, should one of you be killed by a great white shark, I guarantee you come next year there will be a bronze plaque here, right here, with your name on it. <laughs> so other than that, that's all I have. So, Can you refresh us um, how those people died on their way home? They hit a mine. They were, driving in a, they were driving in a convoy on their way back. They had just done a year uh, in country. Ooh. were on their way back to fly home, mm. and they hit a mine, oh. and five of them were killed. Oh. Mm. 50 years ago today. Let's have a moment of silence for them. Thank you, Rick. God bless America. Thank you all. Thank you all. You do, Ralph. Would anyone else like to speak under public comment? My name is Lenny Paul. Uh, I've been a long time resident now, a little over 20 years. That's a long time to me. Um, I'm also a business owner in town here. And I've got a few concerns about the upcoming seafood festival. Um, I, I know it's a big event. I know it does a lot for the town, a lot for the businesses in the area, the vendors also. But I'm a vendor. I also have a permanent position. I recently acquired C Street Subs. You, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's been in business for 52 years. Um, I aim to stay, in, stay in open for Seafood Festival. The only thing I have about complain about it, and I've spoken to the chamber about it, and we kind of came to a, an agreement, but it, it's not to my satisfaction. Um, part of it is the refrigerator trucks that are going to be parked across the street in the loading zone for three days. They're noisy. I can't even park there for an hour. And that's, that loading zone is partly for my business. The other thing is there's a trash containers. They're going to be further a little bit downwind of my place. I have an open dining room. And I'm kind of concerned about the odor and everything. I've been assured it's going to be emptied every night. Uh -huh. It's just the point. There's plenty of other places to park these things. I understand the refrigerator trucks are for the businesses, the vendors that are going to be at the seafood festival. And it's accessible for them to keep their frozen goods in or whatever. There's a parking lot 100 feet away. It, I don't know why they can't rent a spot there to put their things in. They're putting a beer trailer there and a few other things, an ice trailer. A couple of trucks and a trash bin isn't going to be that much more. The thing, the thing I have is my business is going to be open, along with a few others, the candy store across the street. Mm -hmm have to listen to that for three days. There's a hotel down the street that people sleep in, and they're refrigerator trucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the, the trash bin is actually going to be closer to the hotel. I don't know why they can't be parked somewhere else. I've made a few suggestions, but I've, I've been um, assured that the trash bin was going to be emptied every night. That's a good thing. But I just wish there was another way. I don't know how else to go about it, but I, I don't seem to be I don't feel I was making any headway. We came to somewhat of an agreement, but I'm not satisfied with it. I'm a business owner. Actually, I own several businesses in this town. <laughs> and I just want my business to be open. I'm there permanent, not like a, th a three-day weekend. You know what I'm saying? I should have precedence or priority on how my business can be conducted. I don't want to have to shut my roll-up doors because of the odor or the noise. You know, That's all I have to say. I'm sure we can come to some kind of an agreement, but I'm not happy with what the way it's going now. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Ouellette. Um I'm representing the Hampton Highlands. Uh, my residence is Five Falcone Circle. I'm going to direct a butter to the Aquarian Water Tower. Uh, that's considered off Exeter Road. Um, so I'm here tonight to talk a bit about our opposition to that uh, tower being put in place or the second tower being put in place. Um, you know, we've had an opportunity to meet with Aquarian. 
um, August 8th, I believe was the date that uh, they had opened the doors to the existing tower, had us in, showed us some of the details of what they're planning, how they're planning to do it. Um, I think what we walked away with in terms of that discussion was really opposition against the tower at this point in time, relative to the fact that there doesn't seem to be enough data to support that that is the only place uh, it could be. Hmm. So, so that said, we know that a project of this size uh, and magnitude, certainly the timetable that they have set forth uh, for executing that plan um, is, a, is a couple years. So you're talking about 50, 60 homes, uh, cul-de-sac type, type neighborhood, where you'd have large construction equipment um, coming in and out of that neighborhood quite often. Hmm through the course of the day. So again, just for order of magnitude, there's about 100 kids in that neighborhood, um, my house included, houses across the street. So again, I think this is the first step for us in terms of um, coming out and talking about our opposition, uh, ensuring that we're on public record. Uh, there'll be other opportunities for us to reach out to you uh, with other forms of correspondence under separate cover uh, to ensure that you are you understand the the concerns that we have relative to safety, um, the impact to our neighborhood, dust, mm. all of that, yeah. anything that goes with a large construction project. So appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. My name is David Minan. I'm also a resident of Hampton Highlands, Seven Falcone Circle. Uh, and came here for much of the same reason that Patrick did. Uh, this is an opportunity for us after the, uh, the Aquarian uh, neighborhood meeting a few weeks ago to come and talk about this project. And as Patrick mentioned, we do have significant concerns regarding this project and the current plan location on Falcone Circle. Um, we have, in, in addition to um, about the 75 homes, there's about 100 children in that neighborhood. And just in the entrance to that area, there's three separate bus stops alone. You know, these, these are areas where we have large amounts of kids out there at 8 o'clock in the morning, again at 3 o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. uh, for the, for the uh, little ones. And then the, the high school kids are around the corner. Uh, our significant concern at this point is just the safety of the children, the safety of the people in that neighborhood for a, what's effectively a two-year construction project. At this point, um, we don't feel like that is the best location for that water tower. I understand that there's height requirements. I understand that there's infrastructure requirements. Uh, but we feel that other sites, potentially sites that e aren't even owned by Aquarian, should be looked at and presented as well in terms of possible solutions. And one other point I would like to make, too, is uh, we actually have a little summer uh, barbecue in our neighborhood where all the people get together. It was this past weekend. and. We were talking about the water tower project, and there's actually quite a bit of confusion in the neighborhood, and Aquarian has gone door to door and tried to talk to people, but there's still confusion about this actual project. Many people think that it's actually a ta water tower maintenance project where one tower will be erected while one is, while the existing one is refurbished, and then somehow that other one will come down. So it's absolutely not clear to many people that at the end of this project, at the end of the two, the two years, that there will be two water tower units side by side mm -hmm. in that neighborhood. So just thinking, and actually I did Google this. It was kind of a fun experiment. If you Google you know, two water towers next to each other, I've never seen that anywhere <laughs> in the United States. Google didn't have it, so you know it's got to be true if Google didn't have it. But the point is that there is a little bit of confusion. I wouldn't say a little bit, a, a lot of confusion in the neighborhood just about the fact that once the maintenance is complete, that water tower is still there. That was actually confusing to me. I didn't have that clarified until Aquarian actually came out to my, my door. I just happened to be home that day from work. And I was able to talk to them. And at that point, I became, it became clear to me that there were two water towers. So I still think there is some confusion mm -hmm. just regarding this entire project and how, how it's been, been communicated. So thank you very much for the time tonight. Others wishing to speak? Uh, Mike Edgar, 70 Ants Terrace. I just wanted to uh, say something now because I know you're going to be discussing the issue that we faced uh, over the weekend 
uh, with a query and you'll be discussing and asking them questions. But mm -hmm. just to make a comment that I've been asked an awful lot of questions about it and uh, there seems to be so much confusion on how we're supposed to be notified. So many people weren't notified. Yeah. What's the protocols that Aquarian has? And it's, uh, it, it's quite a topic in town. And you know, we might have a more serious event sometime where people have to be notified right away and everybody has to be notified. So it's, it's quite a question of uh, how that's gonna be done. Thank you. Thank you. Randy Cushing from Winnicott Road, 395 Winnicott Road. And just following up on that, I'm glad that the Aquarian's gonna be here to answer some questions. I'm, like everybody else in the community, pretty concerned about what happened over the weekend. I know that the immediate concern has to be public health and public safety, but there's also an economic impact, I think, mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. And I just, by sharing to the board, <clears throat> I had conversations today with the Public Utilities Commission, which has kind of dual oversight over Aquarian. It's the Department of Environmental Services obviously has control over our jurisdiction and regulates the issues relating to water quality. Um, the Public Utilities Commission has jurisdiction over rates and how much uh, people are charged. There's an assumption that when we pay high water rates uh, that the water that comes out of our tap should be potable, should be able to be d d drank safely and the current situation, what happened over this weekend is just unacceptable. I will say that my conversations with the PUC is that they're gonna be consulting with the DES uh, about the kind of this dual jurisdiction and try to figure out a way that there can be some kind of oversight and investigation um, that's not just the company, but it's just that the regulators to try to provide some information to the community um, and to take a look at uh, if there are some changes that need to be made in the Methodist oversight so that we don't have a situation where 9,500 customers of a company have to spend their weekend boiling water in their kitchens. Thank you. Thank you. Others wishing to speak this evening? Gary Pohl, Four Lion Street. Uh, I'm a recreational fisherman. I fish a couple times a week and stuff, and the only place we can possibly get, I keep my boat at uh, Hampton River Marina, and the Hampton Harbor is the only place that we can get gas as far as the state pier goes. Well, within since last Sunday or so, for a week, they've had no gas, which means that you either have to cart the gas in, or else you're gonna have to go to up the ride to get gas. Now, in addition to myself, I'm wondering how the fire department, fire rescue people get their gas. I, I question the, the safety of this whole thing. And uh, I've, I've spoken to a few state officials down there. They have no idea when they're gonna get gas. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Others wishing to speak this evening? Seeing none, we're going to move on to announcements and community calendar. Um, I'd like to just say what a wonderful uh, pig roast it was at the uh, Hampton Historical Society. They had the largest crowd ever, and uh, it was very nice. They did so many volunteers did a great job, and it's really a fun time. Jim. Yeah, announcement community calendar. Most importantly, school opens this week, so drive safely, please. Don't rush to work. Second, hit the beach that Ralph Fatello talked about. That's a phenomenal event, and if you got any time, you should go down there and see it because they do a great job. And then the seafood festival coming up in a couple of weeks, but also at the American Legion Hall on 9-11. The ceremony mm -hmm. they have there is absolutely beautiful, and everybody in, the, in town should try to get there to see that one. Mm -hmm. Rusty. Thank you. Ditto. Mary Louise. Yes, um, I, I appreciated the uh, opportunity to sit down um, with Aquarian this morning, and I think all sides really need to uh, step up to the plate, and we've got to find a better way of communicating with the public for any emergency. Okay, Regina? Um, I have nothing for announcements, but based on the public comment that we just heard. Okay, well, let's I save it then. This is for public comment. And did you have, I mean, not public comment, but announcements and community calendar. Then I would like to make a motion that we can discuss number one under old business while the public is uh, still in the audience because I believe that some are here. 
to uh, find out about the discussion on request for removal of utility closure device on pole number 38, Kings Highway and 17th Street. We're going to be having the lawyer, and he's not here yet. He's going to be talking under at this time. So any um, announcements in community calendar? Okay. We're, next, we have the approval of minutes, August 12, 2019. Motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, <clears throat> next, we have the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I request that number three and number seven be removed from the consent agenda to be discussed and voted on separately. I'll second that. All, all those in favor? Number three and what? Seven. seven. Why? Well, because I'm going to vote. I would like to have discussion on number three, and I am not going to vote for number seven, so. Okay, well, let's go with three. Uh, all those in favor of removing that? There's three. Two. Oh, one opposed. Oh, abstain. Oh, opposed. one opposed and one abstained. And um, did. As far as the, what was it, Regina G7? I mean, I would just, I, I have no problem with the rest of the consent agenda, but okay. I will be. So I, do you want to move, you move the rest of the consent? I will so move the rest of the consent agenda, absent I'm, um, item number three and item number seven. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Of the uh, Yeah, we've already done three. Consent. Yeah, okay, the exception. Exception. We've already done three. Yeah. So... Now, seven. what did you want? Did you want to have a discussion about number seven or just that you're against it? Well, I'll just be voting no against it. Okay. So. And what about the others? Does someone want to make a motion? Well, I'll move to approve item seven uh, if you so choose. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Four and one abstention. Okay. So that... Um, now, what do we want to do? Discuss about number three? Whatever. To have a further discussion or what? Mr. Welch. Uh, it was asked to be held, so the board has to discuss it and vote on it. Okay, so... Could I voice Did you my want concern? to address it first? Yes. Yes, well, we heard from public comment today, and also I have a uh, thought that maybe the chamber and the board could... Uh, consider that apparently we have some concern with some of the things that are placed down on C Street, trash specifically, and I would like to make a motion that the board allow the uh, northeast corner of the Ashworth Municipal parking lot to hold whatever needs to be held so that it doesn't interrupt business on C Street. I have no problem with the rest of the uh, Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce Seafood Festival activity requests. Okay, so just so I understand it, you want, what your motion is to restrict the area at the beginning of the street? Is that what allow allow the chamber to use the uh, northeast corner of the municipal lot on Ashworth Ave for whatever they need to store over there, so it does not interfere with the business on C Street. Mr. Ashworth Ave that you're talking about. Yeah. I just would like to say the Seafood Festival already is renting one of the town parking lots. So I mean, how many town? Well, I don't think that I think we should just this? allow them to use it not rent it, just allow them to well, use it so it doesn't interfere with businesses. Did you want to say something? Yeah, the, the what's what they're talking about on the consent calendar has nothing to do with uh, C Street, this this right here. But plus, if we change that, that's exactly, we're going against what the police chief came in here and told us. Well, I, for one, am also against it. Um, I think that there should, something should be done so that that, there isn't constant noise outside this man's business. I can agree with that, but but then again, you know, we're gonna. That was the police chief that came in. He said it was for security reasons. I mean, there's a lot of reasons here that they put. And there's a lot of security going into that. So I know, but I think that there needs to be another answer. This is why we probably shouldn't have done what was already done because I'm, you know, this, it. it We've gone to the belt well one too many times. This was a problem last year. It's a problem again. It's not fair to this gentleman. Right. Force the other man out of business. Right. They shouldn't. They. Sh I don't see why they can't move it back, even if it's 20 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm against it. I don't know where okay, we go. But number three has nothing to do with C Street. Um, if you look at it. There's nothing that says about C Street. I. 
It's referring. Talks about the traffic pat patterns on Ashworth Avenue, one way Ocean Boulevard, closure H Street to uh, Ashworth Avenue, uh, A through H Streets, town parking lots opening and closure times Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, use of message boards for traffic information. So it has nothing to do with it. Okay, well, I'm unhappy also, so I don't know what's going to have to happen. I have here. a comment, Rick. Yeah. Um, the Seafood Festival request says, we would like to request that we follow the same procedures as implemented over the past 17 years. I would argue that these procedures are no longer working. I know the police chief has uh, safety concerns, and I understand that completely. And that's why I feel that the town should offer up some of their land so that it can go more smoothly this year. It may only be one business, but again, that's who I represent. So. I'm, I'm against Rick, the town giving up the land. They should rent it if that's what's going to happen. They already have rented the other one. That's fine. I would be in agreement. Again, with this is again, Wesley. this number three has nothing to do I with. I know, but Street. what's going to happen here? Because why don't we stick to we the were, agenda? We were told something different, Jim. I feel too. But I'm sorry, we're talking about number three. I know. Well, what's going to happen? How we can are talk we talk about C Street separately? I think, but I think okay, this, we'll this, just this, hold this, it up and it. we'll bring the whole project up under all business okay. again. Oh, I was just We're going to bring it up under all business, Mrs. Wolseley. It's easier that way. Um, so moving on to the appointments. Christy Pulliam. Pulliam. The July financials, uh, they were posted on the website on Thursday and emailed to each of you along with the budget committee. It's the seventh report of 2019 and the target is 58.34%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 18 to 19. The 19 revenue is higher than 18 by $368,630. Um, the month's total income was $951,697. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $313,647. Interest on taxes at $12,079. Building permits at $48,796. Departmental income at $47,216. Interest on deposits at $17,320. Parking lot, uh, the daily lot revenue came in at $217,246, and the real estate trust at $134,064. On the expense side, you'll find that we are at 55.95%, or under budget by $602,867, or 2.39%. In July of 18, we were over budget by $369,994. General government section is at 57.99%. The sections that are above target here are the legal, personnel administration, and other uh, general government or parking lots. The police department is at 52.97%. Fire department is at 57.46%. Other safety services that is at 105.12%, and that's related to the um, second annual payment for the hydrants, so now that line is at, at, at $507,916. Mm -hmm. Public Works is at 50.45%. Parks and Recreation is at 48.82%. Um, the Warren Articles are continue to be expended on page 18 and 19. And Fund 20 for the Recreation has a balance of $250,533. Uh, cable Committee Fund has a balance of $201,904. The Private Detail has a balance of $210,573. EMS Fund has a balance of $370,978. And the Wastewater System Development uh, fees collected in 2019 total $26,220 with a balance in that account of $207,868. That is all. Questions, Mrs. Wolsey. No, I don't. Thank you for the report. I appreciate it. Uh, Gina. Thank you, Christy. Uh, just a question: the what is the status of the uh, financial statement audit for this year? 
I received the draft last week. So oh, okay, I have to great. go through the draft, and once we accept the draft, I need to do my MDNA, and then it will be coming out. Great. Awesome. Thank you. And i just like to put a couple things out about a few of the budgets in far as what the expenses for them and what their revenues they generated, so it's not really anything okay. you need to answer. Um, the building department 2019 budget is $230,000, and so far through July 2019 revenues are almost $165,000. Uh, the tax collector 2019 budget is 105000 and keep in mind that department is responsible for this year probably approximately slightly mm -hmm. under $60 million in tax revenues. Mm -hmm. um, the parking lot budget, we of course we're working under default budget, is about 95000 and so far through July they've generated revenues of almost $370,000. So that's uh, three budgets that really pay for themselves. And the only other thing I wanted to bring up, Christy was kind enough to work with uh, the Deputy Director of Public Works and gave us a spreadsheet that yeah. shows the uh, yep. tons of state park trash and the amount we charged, we charge for state parks to uh, pick so. all that up. Yeah. And that goes from 2015 through 2019 yeah. of June. But I was just going to ask you if you could perhaps work with Jen Hale to update that as of September. And I would like to have that as part of we your do that review. monthly. So that's a mm -hmm. spreadsheet we keep uh, monthly. Good. And to compare it to the total. Now that is tons. I believe it had the tons on it. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it had the tons yeah. and the dollars, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> would it be possible to compare those total tons to the total tons that the town takes in? Um, I can check with Jen. I'm sure we could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. All right, perfect. Thank you. I have no yeah. further questions. Jen? Yeah. Um, the revenue being up by 143,716, mm -hmm. attributed to what? I mean, it's up over last year. I, I know you took the Primex out of it already. I did take the Primex mm -hmm. out of it. I think the majority of it, it, I would guess off the top of my head, I believe is motor vehicles and parking lots. Mm -hmm. The majority of the 143. There are other lines that are up, you know, yeah. over, nine, over 18, but those are the two that are usually... Um, up significantly over, and I think if I every year we go up on the on the on the motor vehicles, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, parking lots sometime? are up. Parking lots are up about eighty thousand. Just doing quick math here, and motor vehicles are. Let's see, they're at two point three. Round numbers again. They're at two point three million, and in July of uh, eighteen, they were at almost two point two. So that's almost a million. Or almost a hundred thousand, not a million. Almost a hundred thousand yeah, dollars there. Nice. No, but there's a hundred thousand yeah. just right there. So yeah. that yeah. kind of explains those two lines tend to be the heavy drivers, especially at this time of year. Okay, yeah. and the other one, safety services up at one hundred and five point one two, and that's the result of hydrants coming in over budget. Yes, Five we months. always budget hydrants. We never have. We can never predict what it's going to be. So we usually, when we present our budget, we budget it at whatever we've paid in that current year. However, since we're on the default. We're back a couple of years in regards to what we paid, you know. Okay, so the hydrant fee hasn't gone up that much, or? The hydrant fee has not gone up probably the entire amount over that budget because the budget would probably be back to either the 17 or 18 amount at this point with oh. the two defaults. Okay, okay, good. Thank you very much. Up from what we paid in those years. Yep. And the other reason for that, too, is that they do that in two payments, correct? It's not yes. so. When you divide that out over 12, obviously it's going to be high, but as it gets, um, I mean, it'll still be 105, correct. but. It'll still be 105 because we're not going to spend any more from right. that line. So right. it'll stay right where it's at. Mm. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Christy. We You're appreciate welcome. it. Thanks for all that you do. Thank you. <clears throat> um, how many people are here for the Aquarian Water? Show of hands. <laughs> so, you want to join us at the table, Carl? Uh, John Hurley. And the rest of them. They weren't on the agenda, but. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with me tonight, uh, my far right is John Walsh. He's our Vice President of uh, Operations. And near to me is John Hurley. He is our Vice President for uh, Water Quality Environmental Management. Uh, we're going to postpone our uh, regular quarterly update to the October 7th meeting. 
I'm going to turn it over to John to talk about the uh, boil water uh, event over the past weekend. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as Carl mentioned, I'm John Walsh, Vice President of Operations for Aquarion. And thank you, Chairman and uh, members of the board, for having us here this evening. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank all of our customers for their patience, patience over the last few days. Uh, and I want to thank local officials, including Mr. Welch, Mr. Sullivan, the selectmen, Chief Sawyer and the police department, uh, Chief Ayotte and the fire department, the Chamber of Commerce, all for their assistance uh, throughout this incident. Uh, what I'd like to do, uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like mm -hmm. to do uh, run through a timeline uh, for a couple minutes here. Uh, first of all, uh, please know that the water is safe to drink. We know this from our testing. Uh, this past Friday and Saturday, we collected a total of 42 samples of water from our distribution system and wells. All of these samples were free of E. coli bacteria and coliform bacteria. Uh, also, please know that we disinfect the water from all of our wells prior to sending it uh, into our distribution system, and that is on a continuous basis. Uh, now let me step back a few days to explain why we had to implement a boil water order. On a regular basis, uh, ev just about every week, we collect samples of water from our distribution system uh, and to test them for bacteria. Last Wednesday, we collected uh, 10 water samples. A laboratory began uh, the testing process on those samples on Thursday afternoon, and it takes about 20 hours for that analytical process to identify whether there are any bacteria in any of the samples. Uh, about 20 hours later on Friday morning, we were notified that one of those 10 samples had E. coli bacteria, bacteria in it, and another sample had coliform bacteria in it. The presence of E. coli bacteria indicates uh, a potential for real water quality risk. Because of this, uh, at 1025 on Friday morning, the New Hampshire DES, Department of Environmental Services, notified us that we would have to issue a boil water order. We immediately convened what we call our critical event team, which consists of operations, water quality, and communications staff, uh, and includes members of the senior team and executives from across the company. And we set up a command center at our offices here in New Hampshire. Uh, about an hour later, at 11.30 on Friday morning, we began contacting local and state officials to inform them of the boil water order. Uh, again, on Friday from about noon to 2 p.m., we met with the uh, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services to define the area of our system that we placed on a boil water order and then to define the requirements of the boil water notice. Uh, shortly before 3 p.m. on Friday, we provided uh, the DES with a proposed boil water notice based on those discussions with them, uh, and they approved that notice. And shortly after that, uh, after receiving the approval, we launched a code red, or what's called a reverse 911 phone call to all of our customers in Hampton, Northampton, and Rye. And we posted the notice on our website and Facebook page. Uh, I will say, relative to the reverse 911 calls, um, we can only, of course, uh, send calls to customers who we have the number for. Yep. Uh, and I believe, based on our report uh, back from the Code Red service, uh, about 80% of our customers received that, uh, received that call. Hmm. Um, at that time, we also began a second round of calls to local officials to net, let them know about the boil water notice uh, and that it was published on our website and on our Facebook page um, and that we had also sent that code red message to our customers. Uh, we also contacted local media outlets, including newspaper, radio, and TV to get the message out. Uh, and that included hourly radio announcements on six radio stations. Uh, importantly, through Friday evening, Aquarian staff went door to door to restaurants, hotels, and other critical customers to make sure they knew of the uh, boil water order and to uh, answer any of their questions. Uh, we also, on Friday, collected water samples from our distribution system and our wells um, to lift the boil water order 
DES required that we have two rounds of water samples in two successive days to be free of coliform bacteria and E. coli uh, bacteria. <coughs> so Friday was that first round of samples. Uh, on Friday afternoon and evening, a team of Aquarian staff from other parts of the company were mobilized to, our, uh, to New Hampshire. And this included field, st field staff and executives. Um, and we have had senior managers and executives on site continuously since early Saturday morning. Uh, on Saturday, uh, this a team of folks from our other operations and our New Hampshire operations continued the door-to-door -door visits to restaurants, hotels, and critical customers. What we recognized is that although we knocked on a lot of doors on Friday evening, it could be different staff who were working in the restaurants uh, the next morning, and we wanted to make sure they uh, knew there was a boil water notice. Uh, in total, from Friday evening through Sunday afternoon, we made over 500 door-to-door -door visits to customers. On Saturday, we also set up and manned bottled water stations at the fire stations in Hampton and Northampton and brought water, bottled water to life care facilities and, and senior centers. Uh, and we'd like to thank the fire department for allowing us to use their parking lot to set up that wa bottled water station. Uh, we also set up electronic signboards at key locations in town, adding to the signboards that the police had already set up earlier on Saturday. Uh, throughout the day on Saturday, we continued communicating with local officials and staff through phone calls and emails. Um, An early Saturday afternoon, the laboratory uh, notified us that 21 water samples that we collected on Friday were free of coliform bacteria and E. coli bacteria. Uh, because we needed two rounds of bacteria-free samples to lift the boil water order, we still couldn't lift the bo boil water order on Saturday afternoon, but we did communicate uh, the good news to our customers through a code red or the reverse 911 phone call. Early Sunday morning before 8 a.m., we were notified by the lab and the DES that the second rounds of 21 water samples that we had taken on Saturday were free of coliform bacteria and E. coli bacteria. Mm -hmm. So with two rounds of bacteria-free samples, the DES authorized us to lift the boil water order. Our team then mobilized to communicate that the boil water order was lifted with stakeholders throughout, through the communication channels uh, that we'd been using. That included code red, phone calls to customers, phone calls and emails to public officials, radio stations, newspapers, TVs, the electronic signboards, and uh, we did the door-to-door -door visits all throughout Sunday uh, morning to the restaurants, hotels, and critical customers. Uh, with the boil water order lifted, our focus now is on meeting with stakeholders, and we had a meeting this morning uh, with Hampton and uh, one Northampton official to get their feedback about what went well and where we can improve. Uh, once again, we apologize to the inconvenience this had on our customers and public officials and the town staff. Uh, we thank you all for your patience, and we thank Hampton officials and staff for their assistance throughout this incident. With that, we would be glad to answer any questions. Okay. Um, first, I, I'm going to ask Fred to um, have some exchange. And is it okay that either after the board gets to speak that we allow our people that are in the de delegation um, legislature, legislature mm -hmm. to speak yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Is so that a Fred, motion or? Uh, no, consensus okay. is fine. So yeah. everyone agrees. Well, it's fine. Yeah. It's a town issue, though. But yeah. Well, yeah. they're here, and otherwise they don't get to talk. Mm -hmm. We uh, we all met this morning. Query and their officials and, and and staff met this morning with the town. Uh, Northampton was invited. They were here. Uh, we came away from that meeting with the understanding that there needs to be a more comprehensive emergency management yeah. type situation uh, structured so that uh, people can get noticed more easily. Yeah. Um, I did note to the chairman today that uh, in the last eight, eight or nine years ago, we purchased a number of uh, electronic signboards. Those signboards pretty much are trash at this point. We've requested three times that new boards be purchased, and all three times that budget item has been defeated. Uh, we're going to be asking again, and we're going to be asking that the town subscribe to E911 under the public safety. 
uh, Department of the State of New Hampshire so that we can, in fact, yeah. notify everybody in town, okay. whether you're on the water system or not, because eventually you're going to come into town to use something. Right. So everybody has to be notified. There's a lot of work to be done. Aquarian and the town are going to work to get that done along with Northampton and the two districts in Rye so that we all have a uniform system that we can rely upon at a moment's notice. We jumped the gun in Hampton because I talked directly with the state and they had told me an order had been authorized. So uh, before you issued your order, we issued the order here as far as the town was concerned. So we were a little bit before you, but uh, we wanted to make sure that people were notified as quickly as possible in every medium that we had. And what we found out was that there are some things that we need to change in our own electronic medium yeah. to make it more readily available to everybody in town. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah uh, I think that there has been a lot of controversy about this. And um, for the things that would concern me to be important are that, you know, the call, many people that say they have aquarium water weren't called. Um, and I, you know, have a hair salon. I talk to people all the time, and there's just no rhyme or reason. They're all different. Uh, one lady I talked to, she got called in Florida, um, you know, which you have no, you know, she doesn't live here anymore. She doesn't even pay a bill, but she was notified. But people that do pay bills weren't notified. And I question, I know that, and I don't know enough about it, and I wish I did. Uh, maybe it's something we should discuss more here, and Rusty might know a little bit about it. We have a list of our vulnerable people that I know that the um, fire uh, department keeps for people that have a lot, a variety of different reasons. Either they're older or they might get snowed in and things like that, so we try to look after them. And I think that maybe we could expand that list, especially when it comes to vulnerable people and nursing homes and things like that, that we could automatically make sure that that's done. And so we, I feel, as a town, need to tighten up that. We, we have an emergency have. call list, and in fact, the list was energized. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, it only contains those people who have allowed us to call them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people right. will not do that. They will not sign up to allow us to call them. That may have to do with the fact that when an emergency arises, we'll call you. It doesn't matter if it's 1 o'clock in the morning. We're going to call you mm -hmm. to let you know what's going on. And a lot of people just do not want to have that done simply because of the hour and time. We can't restrict it if we have to notify everybody in an emergency. So we have a few hundred people that are on that list, but it requires a sign-up with an understanding that it will happen any time during a 24-hour period in an emergency that you need to know of. Um, one of the selectmen mentioned to me today that what we should do is reactivate the fire department alarm signals mm -hmm. when we have these public emergencies and have everybody in town know what the emergency signal is so that if we have to sound it, uh, that may happen. Uh, the board has to vote that because the board had previously discontinued using the horns mm -hmm. at the fire station. But there are a number of different proposals that we're looking at to see whether or not we can't get messages out quicker and more effectively mm -hmm. for the folks who live in town. Yeah, and more importantly, people that live next door to either older people or um, uh, people that are vulnerable, they need to check on their neighbors. Mrs. Wolseley? Yes, I had the privilege of being at the meeting this morning. I thought it went very well. I thought it was very informative. and. Uh, both the town and, and Aquarian need to uh, work together. We found areas where we can improve. And I will say that I made a suggestion that Aquarian might consider putting an insert in the bills asking customers to give their current phone number. Some people change their phone numbers frequently and so that Aquarian uh, can contact. We don't want to have anybody left out. Anytime there's an emergency like this, we really want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to understand uh, what's going on. And uh, I will be uh, happy to speak with our fire chief when he uh, is in here to talk with us, because I do think that we need to go back to the, the whistle from the fire station, warning of A, a working fire, or B, an incident like this to get everybody in the town notified all at once, at least that there's a problem when they hear that whistle, and then we can follow up. But I appreciate uh, what Aquarian uh, has done, and I think we had a very productive meeting this morning. 
Thank you. Yeah, I pretty much what everyone else, what everyone has already said, especially the town manager, I agree with. Uh, the problem I came across was that I realized social media how convenient it is. I use it all the time, but the complaints that I have were that people that don't use social media they didn't know, and I know that one of the problems was they might not have given you the phone number. The same reason that town manager Welch has uh, yeah. explained. But looking over your uh, timeline for the boil water event, and I think personally, and from what I've heard from the public, you guys did the best that you could do. Mm. We There's some hiccups that we have to address, both the town and aquarium. One but moment. I just have to state, Regina, that you have abstained from anything to do with This is public, and I've gotten phone calls on it. So it says here, 11.30 a.m. Well, we have people on the board that are going to challenge you. Yeah, that's fine. 11.30 a.m. Okay. Uh, Mark, communication you join started us with the, local. You're out of, we're, let's, we're this bringing says them. that I got communication Regina, at 11.30 a.m. My Mark, name would you is please listed join here. Us I didn't table. find anything out until 2 p.m. from the Regina. town manager. I received an email. You've abstained so from a, all things to do with the No, I didn't. I abstained from anything having to do with non-public discussion. The town lawyers here. How does this work? That's uh, wrong. I never got anything at 11:30 o'clock in the morning. I didn't find out till after two from the town manager an email. If a selectman abstains from a particular uh, subject matter or party, the selectman can speak as a member of the public, but not as a member of the board. Okay, so I'll speak as a member of the public. Okay, public speak. Public comment basically is over. Oh, but okay. Sorry. Okay. And you're supposed Just remember, to be sitting in the Delta audience. Too, and it says you're our supposed Barnes. to be sitting in the audience. Well, right? everyone else that abstains from things that is well, sitting Mr. in the audience. Well, he's going to step down for the next uh, thing. Oh, okay. We asked before the meeting started. I have started. no further comment. I'm fine. Okay. All right. Mr. Waddell. Yeah. I've set the meeting this morning, which was a very good meeting, I think, and I was involved on Friday and stuff. And both parties, you know, we need to move on from here mm -hmm. rather than go back, yeah. but we both agreed that there was some communication breakdown, and the communication breakdown was not only uh, because of Aquarian not getting to us, it was because we didn't have the proper manners of getting to people. Mm -hmm. So I think it was, you know, it was, we all know that we have to move ahead here and do something better. Um, you know, there's a lot that we can look at. I think the emergency management people should have been involved in this. You know, the chief of police is our emergency manager. Uh, he should have been involved in this. The fire department chief should have been involved in this. So from our point of view, we need to do, we need to tighten up and get that. I think there are 9-11 uh, reverse calls that can be not only to customers but to everybody. And I think we should look into that so we should utilize some of the people that we have in town who know that stuff. I think another important thing to, to emphasize, John, is that at no time was the water unsafe. Is that true? I mean, it was a contaminated sample. sample. Is that true? Yes. So there's no evidence to indicate that the water itself was contaminated. When you get a uh, coliform or an E. coli in a water sample, it's an indication that there might be contamination in the system. And that's why we do the repeat sampling. Mm -hmm. uh, if the repeat samples had come back positive, then that would have been an indication there was real contamination in the system. That was not the case. And then testing the wells and finding out there's no E. coli or total coliform in, in the wells themselves, the raw, untreated water, further supported that. And no main breaks, no breaks in the treatment. So there's no way to prove it one, or, one way or the other, but looking at the evidence, our judgment is that uh, the sample became contaminated somewhere in the monitoring process. Okay, and, that, and that's important, to, I think, to uh, emphasize so that people know that they, they at no time was the water really dangerous and that you had to take the steps because there was the contaminated sample. Yes, we had to prove that there was no contamination in the system, and that's why we collected all those additional samples okay. to verify that. Thank you. Rusty. No, I think uh, we, we all learned a lot this week. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I think we, uh, we, we've, we've sound, found some good things. We found some things that we can improve on. Uh, I mean, I heard, I heard about it about 11.15 on, on Friday, but I heard it from a state agency. Uh, when I couldn't get a hold of Aquarian, I drove up and saw Cal, and he told me, yes, in fact, they did, and they were working on a statement with DES. 
Um, and so it was put out then. And then uh, I continued over the weekend to stop in and visit with them and, and make sure. And they, they seemed like they were right on top of everything. They had, they had people out there. I ran into many of their crews out working, uh, stopping at the restaurants and stopping at different houses. Matter of fact, my, my mother-in-law who lives at uh, Oceanside, when my wife went to bring her some bottled water, she said, they've already brought us water in. So they got out to the people and they got to the critical people first. As far as, as, far as what we can do better, um, I think maybe we should have uh, had the police chief uh, open up the EOC. I think that would have done that. EOC I, is? I, I agree. I think uh, EOC is just emer people know. emergency operations center. That's what yeah. we use in this town when we have an emergency. As far as the horn, horns, I would rather see us spend the money on getting the reverse 911. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, I think uh, I talked to a person today who's pretty knowledgeable at it, and uh, it, it, we might have been able to go through the state's EOC if, we, if ours had been open. And that only does, that does uh, the reverse 911, not only does that to landlines, but they can also do it for cell phones. Oh. And they can also do it for certain areas. They can draw a map mm -hmm. of where it is, and any phone that's in that area, they can do it with a cell phone. So I think that's something that we need to look at. I'd rather spend money on that than the horns. They've but I think, I th well, the, are they still working? Well, they better be. Well, they haven't been in 10 years, so. Oh, my God. Um, I, I think I, I'd rather see us spend some money on, on the E911. I think we would use that more. Yeah, a, a lot of people don't that. realize think, either. Yeah. You can have your Hampton number. If you have a Hampton number, you can have it put on your cell phone. I have mine, a 926 number. But I, I just think that's something that we as a I town need from. to look at. <clears throat> we need to do that. And, and you're right, Fred. You're going to get that call. 24 hours a day, seven yeah. days a week if it happens. But I think people would rather have that call and know it and be able to go to their cell phone and be able to, because some people don't have landlines. But, That's right, yeah. and, you know, and I appreciate the water company putting it out on their code red, mm -hmm. which goes to their all their people, but there are so many people that don't have it or don't have the information that I think we can do better at that. And, and the way the system is out there now, the way technology is out there now, uh, it is available, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have some people in this town that know all about it, and we need to, to uh, work on those resources that we have. And one thing I'd like to mention is, in my case, is, is different, and I'll be the first to say that, but I, I haven't heard anyone mention it from this angle, is um, I did have E. coli that I got caught in the hospital when I had a hip replacement. And... Um, I was in the hospital three or four days, and I was actually much sicker from the E. coli than I was mm. from the hip replacement. Yeah. But it started exactly two weeks after I had the hip replacement. So I was, ex I don't know if it's different if you drink it from rather you'd have it through a, a wound. But for me, it took two weeks to come on. Yeah. So I just thought I would throw that out there. One, Mary Louise. one final thought. In these days, with everybody moving around and uh, everybody getting all these different types of phones, I do think it's important for Aquarian and ourselves to have an updated phone. If we can encourage people to share their phone numbers with us so they can be contacted the way that Rusty just explained, I think that we need to do that. And I do want to see some modification on Channel 22 with a crawl across the bottom. They did, they were wonderful, they posted a whole page about the water crisis, but then that gets mixed in with all the other pages. I want to see a crawl on the bottom anytime we have a, a, a problem like this. And what I said to Fred was, I think where it was on our front page, and everything on there is green, we should have made it red. And that way there it would stick out. It would stand out so you yeah. can see but it. But still, you have to wait through all those cards. It's right, it was right on the front page. Uh, it was you, on the front page. It I was saw on the front too. page. It was, and I told you about a water I nose, but it blended in with everything. If it they had made blended. it red, yeah. 
And I got to give. It was the, right at the beginning. I give I mean, the water company yes, credit. But you they, wait. they put theirs in red. But you have to wait through all the solid waste and no, library. No, right, didn't have to. right on the top of it. I turned on Channel um, 22 and I checked it. I'm talking so on the, the, the website. website. The I'm website, talking not. Channel 22. Yeah. Well, we're ta Some talking. Some people the only have Channel 22. They don't have the website. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to modify Channel 22 to accomplish that. It will not take a banner. Right. Yeah. In but order, in order to do what what is being talked about right here, yeah, we would have to do in case of emergency. That's why our first phone call was to emergency management. We would shut channel 22 down. We put a slide up. That's all you'd ever see until the emergency was and done. We have to make sure. Nothing okay. else so you would, in lieu of slide. a crawl, you just put it and up put here. Put the crawl on. That's the problem. Yeah, you just have no one crawl. slide. Just yeah. that. Oh, yeah. okay. And we have to also make sure that um, Mr. Welch has the ability to order these things put on, which I don't at the moment. So. At the moment. So we're going to go over that also. Okay, good. Okay. Um, any other comments for the gentleman? Thank you for coming in tonight. Carl, did you want to say more? No. No. Sure, Carl? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I've been a busy guy and, all day. Um, <laughs> So, uh, did how long is this number three going to be? Is that a long one or? It shouldn't be too bad. It, no, it shouldn't be. Okay, we'll go with number three is Ellen Boulard, CP Management. Please Good. join us. You want to take the chair? You might be Sorry. more comfortable. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm sorry, I forgot to invite the people to come up here. Uh, you do it. Sorry. You're done. Did you guys want to say anything? I Did you come it. come up and address? I'm sorry, Mrs. Boulard. You've already talked to them, so if you'd like to make a few comments. Right, just very briefly, State Senator Tom Sherman. Um, clearly, the most important take-home message is about communication. Yep. Um, actually, on the E. coli side, that is my specialty. So. Um, <laughs> I've seen patients with coliforms and E. coli all having diarrhea, uh, but this particular form is very different. There are several different strains of E. coli. So you have E. coli 0157E7, which is the one that came from Jack in the Box and poorly cooked meat. That's a much more toxic form. Yeah. Um, so generally, as was put out by many people, this is generally well tolerated. Um, unless you're elderly or very young or immunosuppressed or have other specific cases. Um, that being said, what I'm taking home from this, just from having listened to this, is my action item is to look at statewide. Uh, I serve as vice chair on the uh, Drinking Water Groundwater Advisory Commission. So have a lot of access to DES and I think, again, uh, also to emergency management, so working with emergency management management statewide. Uh, this is a regional issue, uh, not just a Hampton Town issue. As you know, it affected Rye and Northampton. So that communication piece, and again, not just for Aquarian, but for the other mm -hmm. uh, regional utilities. Uh, so this has been a, a very unfortunate um, experience, but I think it's also shown some, some chinks in the armor that we need to address statewide and regionally and, and you know you all in the town will be working on your part. But I will take this back to emergency management statewide and certainly if uh, uh, if Fred has specific questions, make that link, I can yeah. help facilitate that. Good. Good. Thank you very much yeah. and Good. thanks for saving the day. I forgot to <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. You know, Rusty nailed it as far as I'm concerned. My question immediately was, has, you know, and I don't, I have to ask someone, was the state involved at all? Because it, when, this was just not one town, it affected three communities. And I was wondering where the emergency operations center at, at the, in Concord was, if that had been alerted. Because they do have the system, I know, that can contact across the board everybody in the town. And not just the customers of aquarium, but people who live here who might otherwise be consuming water mm -hmm. someplace along. That. that was a really um, important thing to me. And it, it points out the need for, for greater uh, 
greater coordination. And I, I know it's a, an agenda item that you're going to make an appointee to the new Seacoast, uh, to the reconstituted Seacoast Water Commission. And I'll just do it. I think this is an item, obviously, that would be um, prompt us to have some conversation about how communities and right. in, in common you know, water sources and, and how we deal with contamination, and, uh, you know, with this whole interchange. But on the uh, 27th of September, there'll be that first meeting. It's going to be a Friday at 10 a.m. Yeah. I sponsored the bill to bring it back and I'm um, conveying the first named person calling the meeting. So Great. for the public record, whomever it is that you appoint, and I have a pretty good idea who it might be, um, let you know, know that. And thanks for the town, for the leadership over this weekend, because my, my phone was burning up a little. I don't know if anybody else burning. was. So <laughs> who would you suggest should get in touch with the state? Should it be, should they automatically go to you, or should they come to the town, and we should go to the state, or? In, in terms of? Uh, getting something on that emergency response state wide, as you said. I mean, I, 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 think, I think initially, I, I think it's, it's important that, you know, the, the the town have a conversation about how it emergency yeah. response was and also just within you know I don't know whether Unitil I mean whether excuse me Aquarian called the state uh, emergency management I understand they called DES because it's a water issue mm -hmm. but this is something it's just not about the, the water it involves a you know vulnerable population it's something that you know it's a, it's an emergency it's at least as much of a concern as a bad storm mm -hmm. um, where people are vulnerable. We don't know the extent of it. When you have a boil water order coming out and it's water, people get really yeah. very concerned and, you know, it's mm -hmm. summer and lots of, lots of reasons. I think that was, if that was not part of the equation, if the state emergency management operations were not involved, that's a pretty big problem. I know I, I have a, my cousin works for Mass Water Resources and they have a, the, after 9-11, they had a bunch of concerns about the integrity of a of a drinking water system, um, and that's certainly you know protection of that is part of what emergency management. I, I presume that's being done now. I don't I don't need to know that detail. I just want to make sure someone's making sure that our drinking water is being protected, mm -hmm. not just from you know E. coli, but um, you know we don't want to have anything intruding into the water that's going into our our you know system. Okay. I just wanted to answer your yeah. specific question, and that was um, that I will be reaching out to the Director of Emergency Management for the state because three of my towns were affected, right. so it's not just Hampton, but the more voices, the merrier. So, I'd I, like and I'd like to answer. also yeah. coordinate with Fred, so Great. thank you. Do that. Yeah. Let's make sure we coordinate with, with the Hampton, with Chief Sawyer. Yeah. The head. Yeah. Yeah. Representative yeah. Bushway. Thank you. I just wanted to add one thing uh, following on what uh, uh, I think what, what um, Rennie just said. Um, there will also, in addition to the commission, there's going to be a committee that will meet uh, sometime in September, a, a legislative committee that's going to look at uh, protecting uh, the ability to protect uh, water sources that are currently not protected. Um, so. So that will also be beneficial in the long term to, you know, to, to, to hopefully uh, addressing problems, obviously, before they start. So uh, I, I'm going to serve on that committee so, um, you know, we'll have the opportunity to, to look at ways that we can uh, do something about unprotected water sources now. So. Thank you very much. Anyone else at the table wishing to speak? I think, Mr. Chairman, yeah. just so everybody knows, uh, we did notify our emergency management people, but the state agencies should have notified state emergency management if they felt this was an important issue that needed to be taken up and mm -hmm. used for the emergency management system in the state. Yeah. They did not do that. Yeah. Even though I intercepted the state facilities uh, and talked to the individual directors in, in DES, there was still no notification to state emergency management that there was an emergency in progress. Mm -hmm. So we had to take that into consideration ourselves and just do the best we could. Mm. Thank you for that information. Yeah. Yep. So, so now we're moving on to um, Mrs. Boulard to join us at the table. <laughs> Yeah, you can. Please join us. Sorry. <laughs> uh, former Representative Mindy Mesmer, hydrogeologist and uh, 
was contacted and, and helped a little bit in this area. I'm glad that you had a, a great meeting this morning. Lots of the things that I talked that I thought were concerning to me were discussed, it sounds like. I just had a couple of other suggestions. What Representative Cushing brought up was a very big concern of mine. If this had been something much more serious, mm -hmm. the, t the lag time to me in having people um, notified and many people not notified that talked to me said they only heard about it on Facebook, like Regina had said, uh, was very concerning. I wonder if there's a way for an emergency shutoff to happen someplace, that aquarium and their distribution system, if they could just shut it down entirely, the water? No? Okay. Well, maybe that's something that could be thought about because, you know, if there were something much worse, uh, we would want to make sure that less people get exposed to the issue. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about, I drove up and down the beach in the evening on Friday and did not see any signs on the beach uh, except in Rye. They had the blinking lights that I brought copies of, but um, I can give that to you. That talked oh. about the boil water issue. Uh, Northampton and Hampton did not, and with the high seasonal population on the beaches, yeah. I was very concerned that even though we're going to update the phone calling system, the people on the beach would not necessarily get notified if they're renting for a weekend or a day or a, a weekend. So. Mm. The other thing that I found out was this boil water order on the state's website only says Hampton, and that's not your issue, but there are definitely some things that need to be updated in the state system as well. And I wondered if um, hospitals and medical professionals were identified and notified, uh, you know, if they start seeing a lot of people come into the hospitals with something, um, not in this situation, thankfully, but in another situation, if that could be part of what happens in the future. So. I'll write up something and send it off to the select Good. board with my identified issues. Mm. But thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. And now we have <laughs> <laughs> third time's a charm. <laughs> Get your gavel ready. <laughs> and thank you for being so patient. As you introduce me, I'm Alan Bullard with CP Management. I manage 55 High Street in Hampton. And yes, we sent notices twice over the weekend to them <laughs> um, through our system because that's a medical facility. But most of the tenants there are mm -hmm. practicing um, medicine. So it's been interesting to be here tonight. Was that plain. the um, the uh, the home on the right? That's for. I'm not sure what's. It's not a home. It's a commercial it? building on 55 High Street. That oh, the one on this end. Yeah, that abuts oh, the parking oh, lot down. Oh, yeah. I was town. thinking of the mm -hmm. no. I was home at the other end. <laughs> yeah. But I, Thank you. you know, when I made the appointment to be here tonight, it, it was prior to all this inf in oh. information. I'm sorry. But the um, people at home want to hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sent you a letter explaining what I wanted, which is, are, are two things. We have shingles on the side of the building that abuts the parking lot that are falling off. And the reason they're falling off is because of the trees hanging over the building. Unfortunately, there's not enough room to put a lift there, which is what we'll need to replace those shingles. So I'm asking for permission to be able to stage a section of the parking lot during the time that we need to reshingle that section of the building. The second part is the question of the trees that are overhanging. And I think without a survey, a surveying being done, they're on the town land. Um, and in my letter, I, I sent along a plot plan. Obviously, it's kind of hard to determine. But I measured that the trees are 10 feet from the building. And if you could gauge the plot plan, I think it's eight and a half feet to the lot line. So I was hoping that the town would be able to trim back those branches off the building. And what I have with me are pictures that I took Sunday when I was there showing how they overhang mm -hmm. the, the roof of the building. Okay. Did, Mr. Welch, did you want to address this? We did look at the... Um, information with regards to the lot and it appears that the building from the uh, approval through the planning board has a front setback of six feet from the property line and a, and a backyard setback of seven feet from the property line so it appears that the trees are on town property uh, so it's a selectman's call as to what you wish to do 
Okay, and when are you doing that work? I was leaving that up to you, um, primarily because it, the businesses need parking and we don't want to take it up any more time than necessary. Perhaps uh, later in the season, around October, after the seafood festival, after peep, you know, mm -hmm. leaf peeping and all that, I'm very open to the time element on getting a lift staged there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Wolsey, did you want to say something? Yeah, I do want a motion to allow, uh, I assume, public works. I'm fine with it, but we'll, do you have any questions? No, I, I, it's perfectly sensible. Yeah. And Regina? I have a comment. Yeah, I just had $3,000 worth of damage done to my car by a dead limb falling on it on Mill Road, so I would agree with uh, Mary yeah. Louise's motion Rusty. to uh, take care of it. I would think if uh, you say you need to have the lift there so you can go up and repair the sh shingles. Yes. Is while they were there, if they've got the lift already there, they should be able to trim the trees back, too. At the same time, uh, maybe. At the same time. Mm -hmm. And because uh, if, if a limb is overhanging your property, you have a right to trim it, even if the tree itself is on somebody else's property. All so right. I would say that you have, you know, if you've already got the lift there, then that would be the time to do it. And then, you, then it would be, so... So you're saying it's their responsibility? No, I'm not saying it's necessarily their responsibility, but if you they've already have the lift there, Fred, isn't that? What do you say? What I, if, you, if you want the town to do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to, all those people who have permanent parking along that section, okay, are going to be evicted and made to move someplace else. And then I'm going to call in a tree service for <laughs> X number of thousands of dollars, and we're going to trim all those trees on the backside so that they're up to the property line, and you can get somebody in there to do the work. Uh, that would be what I would have to do because I'm going to have to have somebody who's licensed to do it, somebody who's got the proper equipment to do it, and I don't think a lift for shingling is probably. No, the but right I just figured if, they, if they're going to, you should do it all at the same time so we're not disrupting the parking lot. Is my well, I'll have my to be point. Done one right after the other. Right. I'll schedule it. That was my my point is that we're not disrupting that parking mm -hmm. lot. But okay, so you're asking at the same time that I coordinate with you for the tree service as well while we have. Well, the I got to see if we've got. Yeah, Funds let's let Jim talk for a right I'm, I'm yeah. um, Okay, uh, so does someone want to make a motion? Well, let's ask Fred, how would we frame the motion? Uh, I would just grant her approval uh, and have Public Works work with them to, uh, to accomplish the goal. Okay, I will so move. I'll second that. All those in favor? All, all unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate and your time. Thank you. We appreciate yours too. And uh, I'm sure that they'll be able to work good yes. well with you to okay. Thank get you. the job, job done. Thank you very much. Okay. Next, we have the town manager's report, but we will wait until we have our discussion now that the attorney's here. Are you going to join us or sit at the table yes. there? And Jim Waddell is stepping down because he ab has abstained from this. Uh -huh. Doing the town manager report or the old, no, the old business? Do old this business. because most this people are here for the, this. This is the old business number one. Thank you. Make sure he gets a copy. Mark, you dropped something on, under oh, your thank chair. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the board has been given a uh, petition for asking the selectmen to remove the. Uh, to order the removal of the elect electrical recloser of Unitil uh, from an existing pole. And the uh, petition is dated July 23, 2019. Um, the statutes uh, which are at issue are under RSA 231, which is the lines of telegraph and other companies in highways. And I've given the board a packet of those, and I'll just run through them briefly as they pertain. RSA 231-160 is the authority to erect such equipment. 
uh, which uh, involves the, the board providing a license or uh, when there is a uh, subdivision uh, where the planning board is involved and a new town road is coming into being, uh, there is a, a procedure whereby a uh, poll becomes licensed through that procedure as well. Um, one of the provisions of the licenses is that the, the selectmen can define certain minimum and maximum length of poles, heights, and minimum um, maximum height of structures, approximate location of poles. And then there is a, a section of the RSAs, which is RSA 231 uh, colon 163, which is the one here at issue, uh, which says that any licensee whose rights are affected by the license may petition the selectmen for changes and after notice to the parties and hearing the selectmen may make alterations as the public good requires and that's after notice to the licensee which was provided before and a public hearing which was provided before. Uh, the selectmen have six months after the petition uh, to act and so we're approximately one month into that six month period. And that uh, then uh, either party that is whose rights are affected by the decision within 60 days after the uh, action of the selectmen may apply to the superior court for relief. So that could be either the person who is asking for the change to occur or in this case Unitil who is uh, opposing it. Um, the board has received uh, in addition to the, uh, the original petition asking for removal, a number of communications from people in the area uh, who say um, not, you, we don't oppose relocation, but don't relocate it where we're affected. And then we also have uh, a, a communication that was hand delivered to the board on Friday um, in which Unitil has suggested that uh, one resolution to this could be, uh, and they have offered to uh, move uh, pieces the, um, the steel disconnect switches from the size of the device, uh, which apparently will not impact the operations but will reduce the overall size of the installation and thereby diminish its visual impact. Um, of course, the, the uh, petitioner is complaining about more than visual impact, uh, complaining about uh, some noise, complaining also about effect on, uh, on uh, cell phone service, although that um, apparently has not been uh, proven by at least through the, vi the cell phone companies. Uh, what, I'm, what I suggest to you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, is that um, where the board has six months to um, decide this matter, I would suggest that the board postpone the, making a decision on this matter for four months, providing that Unitil will carry out what they say they would do, which is to remove those uh, steel disconnect switches, which are the, s the stainless steel ones that reflect the light from the sides of the device and uh, see if that will work and uh, that's without prejudice to either side's uh, positions should, should that not be effective and the board can then make the decision after that period of time uh, if necessary. Mm -hmm. And so I provided the board with a, a motion uh, uh, to that effect. Yeah. And, um, and I, I did want to say that Unitil would, would, uh, would agree to proceed in that fashion um, within 30 days. Within 30 days to, to actually perform that work. They would have to schedule it. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be before the 30 days, but they would, they would do that. Okay, questions? How long has this um, monstrosity been in this neighborhood? When was this actually constructed? Do we have any idea how long this has been it's annoying been, this neighborhood? I th think about three months, Fred. I don't know. I yeah. wasn't given a date. Yeah. Well, it's recent. 
So, okay, but it's still uh, having a bad impact on this neighborhood. Do we have any understanding that this neighborhood asked to have this appurtenance placed where it is now? Well, the uh, utilities by law do not have to ask. Uh, that once they have a pole that is licensed, and this one has been by various means, uh, the law provides that they may add these types of devices to, to their equipment without asking either the town's approval or the uh, neighbor's approval. But they have had feedback from this neighborhood that this is creating a serious problem for all of the property owners there. Is that not true? I mean, the uh, neighborhood came out and they're expressing their concerns. Uh, for a number of reasons. Have you seen the picture of what they're planning on doing? Yeah, well, we got the whole packet yeah. from, from units. The units it's considerably are different. Yeah. But, but I, and I have, I know nothing about how you work with the electrical system, but if those uh, wings or whatever they are are taken off, what... Uh, yeah, they have told us that it is, it will still work, they've mitigated it, and they'll still be able to do what they need to do. I will tell for the people that are here tonight that are in favor of this, um, there have been many other people who have been in touch in many different ways. Some of them want the poles removed at their house. Many people on your street that live right next to you are not in favor of removing it. So there's been a lot of input that has come from many different angles. And this appears to be a very good decision. I don't know if anyone here has seen it. You're, I'll be glad to give you uh, our picture, but it takes off the two ends of it. And uh, it looks like it's a compromise. And they'll have they'll start it within 30 days, and it is a possibility that everybody will get a little bit of what they want. Um, I think it's possible if this doesn't happen that it will be turned down. Um, I mean, it's always possible. I'm, but I'm still trying to figure this out, Mr. No, Chairman. Please continue. 30, within 30 days of what? We're going to sit here. So, when so the time clock starts ticking today for, to postpone our, our they have four they're, they're when they make he has made a uh, you know a he got to have this hearing and um, it had we have six months to make a decision so they're asking for four months to make sure they tune this up so that these other people are happy. They're willing to remove part of it on each side, and it looks like a substantial amount. The, the uh, pole will still be able to generate pole, uh, electricity in a fast way in case things go the other way, and we need to be able to make sure people's power is restored. And this is for more than just on this street. It's a large area. Um, so we have the opportunity to here to let Aquarian, they've come with the idea Unitil. that they, Unitil, Unitil, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> that they want to uh, try to make everyone happy. There's many people that don't want the, uh, the poll put elsewhere on King's Highway. That's where the most of the calls are coming from. Okay, but if I can try, I'm trying to figure this thing out. I'm not. Uh, competent with all these uh, structures, but the pole doesn't generate the electricity. This big thing that's on it does. Has and anyone they, tested to figure out if they remove those little end flaps, will did that you read solve? This, Mrs. Wills, I it did. Tells you all the answers I did. But is that going? I, I still have questions. Is that They're going? They're not here to answer your is questions. That, I don't think there's anyone here. Is that going to guarantee that the light? problem, that the light problem that's driving them all crazy will be diminished or the removed. light that sparks in the daytime, you mean, when the sun well, gets whatever up. is glaring okay. in their window. Yes, that's uh, Mary, what's Ma being removed. Yeah, that's Mary that Louise, the, the removed. stainless steel that yeah. reflects the light. That is what's being, is being removed. being removed. Can I, can I just... No. <laughs> so... It's well, why not? I'm not making any decision until we get to hear from the public. There is no sitting here. Well, we're going to. Uh, this is not an open meeting for the public to talk. 
Well, we told the the individuals from that neighborhood who were here two weeks ago that in two weeks they could come back and then we would be here and we would address this. And this is what we're doing right yeah. now. Well, I'm definitely not in favor of postponing it for four months. No, I agree. well, okay. Did you want to make a motion? Because if your motion fails, it won't be. I'm prepared to make a motion. No, I want to hear from the public since that's who I represent. I'm sorry, this is not an open we meeting. We told them we would be back in two weeks. We were here for public comment to anyone that asked. I make to a speak. motion that we make it an open part of the meeting for the public. I'll second. All those in favor? Against? This is a this is a selectman's meeting. When they were in here last week, we had a public hearing. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. That correct. was the public hearing. That was the public they hearing. Had a that is their time this to evening. Speak. This is a good, from what I can see, uh, this is what my motion would be. I hereby move to postpone for four months the making of any decision on the petition of JGS Realty Trust under RSA. Uh, chapter, C, 231. chapter 231 to enable a full evaluation of the effectiveness of the measure that Unitil has agreed to undertake of removing the steel disconnect switches from the sides of the device, which apparently will not impact operations, but will reduce the overall size of the installation and thereby diminish its visual impact. Is there a second? I'll second that. And I have and this is further discussion. I have a question. Well, I have discussion. Yeah, there's plenty. Of this is at the recommendation of our attorney. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I, I went down and looked at this switch, um, and I've seen some others around town. Um, yeah, it is kind of gaudy. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but there, there are other things that are gaudy with, like, two or three transformers on a pole. Uh, and everybody has to do that. And Unitil has been trying very hard over the past six years to upgrade their system here. And I think um, with, with all the new technology and everything that's out there, they're, they're doing the best they can. Um, they, they've come here and they've at least said that well, they'll get rid of part of the, um, the reflective part of it, so that, which is what we heard was a big concern. You know, I, um, I spent a number of years in, in Concord as, as a state rep, and we used to deal with air rights all the time. And the one thing everybody used to tell us was, there are no air rights sold in New Hampshire. Um, so um, uh, I, the wire, when I had my house on Ocean Boulevard, the wires ran right in front of my house. There was two transformers on the pole. Did I like it? No. Did it affect my view? Yes. But that's what it took for the general population to have. So uh, that's why I'm in favor of this motion. It, it allows them to try to try to m mitigate at least some of the problem. And if it doesn't mitigate it and there's still a problem, we can come back there's in four months. There's still enough time to come back. There's still enough time to come back in four months and, and try to correct it then. I don't think, uh, I, I think we got to work at it with both sides. And I think that this is a fair and there's people calling from other areas of town. They want their polls taken down. And I, I don't know if they're going to have the opportunity to file a claim like what was filed here or what. But it's, you know, this is new territory for us. Mrs. Wolseley. I don't give a damn what the contra contraption looks like. I want to know if they will have a guarantee that the light that is glaring in and their property. It's being removed. Do you not understand that? No, I want, I, I think this is vague. I want to know that that light problem, the glaring into their homes problem, will be gone if this stuff is taken off. And I would like to speak, and I would like to know if people that who could priorly use their cell phones in their home will now be able to use their yeah. cell phones again Good point. once these pieces are taken down. Because yeah. we do have a transcript from Verizon that says uh, uh, the resident of 887 Ocean Boulevard received this. Hello, Constance. This is Rod with Verizon Wireless Technical Assistance Group, and I am actually calling on behalf of our executive relations due to the ongoing issue you are having with your cell service. It looks like there is a recloser that was installed by, installed by the electric company that's interfering with your signal. So we did open a net, up a network ticket. We did see a big drop in our call droppings or interference, or like I said, it definitely could affect 
you inside your house. Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't actually have the ability to do anything against them or moving their equipment. Unfortunately, we don't have anything we can do, you know, to have them to remove the equipment so you to get better cell service, but you can try using your Wi-Fi calling. This goes on, but the point is, I don't really care what Unitil says. These are all over town, and ever since Joe came up and uh, made his concerns public, and I believe we have a lot of people in the audience that are here mm -hmm. for that tonight. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, it's affecting residents, and to tell residents that we have to wait four months because the utilities right. supposedly have some excuse that they, well, if they had this excuse, and if they, I'm willing to bet they probably knew this was going to happen, <laughs> then why didn't they do it to begin with? And also, uh, one of the um, petitions we got had 38 signatures on it. They were all from uh, 190 Kings Highway. Mm -hmm which is the uh, home of one of our very own selectmen, Jim Waddell, so I'm glad that he's abstaining from this mm -hmm. conversation. But um, the problem is that these are all over town. I think there's at least four or five of them. No one wants them. And in my view, the reason they're installed is because of all the overdevelopment we have in this town, and this is Unitil's way of addressing it. And this is just yet another reason why doing things without a plan and without looking into the future mm -hmm. affects our residents of Hampton. Okay, so I won't be seconding that motion and I won't be voting on it. I just want to tell you that, yes. I, I, Regina is really fast <laughs> tonight. I didn't get a chance to finish my comment. I, I consider this a stalling motion. Yeah. It's I not a stalling. Dragging What's going to happen? It's stalling. The, 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 it's going to lose the other way also. There's not going to be an answer here tonight. Unitil should have responded to the residents They're not in even this here. They, don't they care. were here two weeks ago for the public hearing. We're supposed to be making the decision. Yes. And now. That, making okay, the decision we now. We are making the decision. We've stuff. made a motion. I make a motion, a motion that they, they remove the recloser. I'll second. Any discussion? It's unfortunately all those in favor, against, so the motion so, fails. If we're promised that we, uh, my understanding when we left here two weeks ago, that both Unitil representatives and the representatives from the neighborhood would be on hand and we could continue to No discuss. one told you that, Mrs. Wolseley, you're wrong. And that, you, you know, that was never said. This is the moat that uh, it's supposed to be made tonight, the decision. Oh, they I'm have agreed to a compromise, and the motion you've made has failed. They should have agreed to do something sensible for that They did agree to do what they thought was right, and they're no, going to... They're, no, no, no. Well, they're going they've to made an pockets. effort. Now, where do we stand, Mr. Welch? Well... Sorry about that. You need to either make a vote to decide something, or if you're going to have a deadlock, nothing's decided and it stays. It stays the same. Yeah, it's going to stay the same. So, again, we have a motion that I made to go with Unitel and give them the chance to correct this and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, they have 30 days to, to make sure that they've done something. And we have a first, we've had a second. second. All those in favor? So where do we go from here? Nothing gets done. Nothing is passed. No motion Sorry. is passed. Yeah, I don't really why know can't, what will happen. Mr. Chairman, why can't we move to have Unitil come back in here, in public, sit down, and discuss this with us, and see if we can reach some accommodation then? They're hiding. I think this is ridiculous. I don't think that's true. Mrs. Well, they're hiding, and they should have handled this long time ago. They were here if two I weeks were in... ago. Well, that's so exciting. Well, they can come again, but I mean, they were here two that's weeks so ago. That's so wonderful. And these people have complained and complained and complained. If I were a property owner down there, like let me I tell stated, you. there are many other people, including people that live in your neighborhood. There's as many people in your neighborhood that do not want it moved. Well, there are many people that don't want it moved. I'm sorry to tell you that. What's, what's the other? So it's, the, well, we've got no decision here tonight, so we're moving on. I'm oh, sorry. I think we should re-engage. Re You've got Labor Day next Monday. 
And the following Monday, I think we should have Unitil come in and have whoever in the neighborhood chooses to come in and try to iron it out what in person. Suggest, Fred? In person. Well, you can always invite Unitil. We can invite them, but we can't. However, the public hearing has been held. It's been closed. That's it's now up. It. No, it, you closed the you closed the public hearing at your last meeting. But my from a legal was standpoint, be back in two weeks. You from a legal stood a lot of things tonight, Mrs. Wilson. From a legal standpoint, you can't reopen the public hearing on this subject unless you start from scratch. Well, we shouldn't have closed the public hearing then. We should it's have been closed. You were the one that uh, I, part the board voted made that decision. You made the decision. I yeah, well. I'd like to make a motion that we invite Unitil in for the September 9th hearing and that if anyone from the public has concerns that they come into public comment and I know that Elise Selectman, Wolseley and I will incorporate I will those comments a, into our decision. For a hearing or I will for for a a Public meeting. comment. Public hearing. You said hearing. You want Unitil to come in for a hearing. Do you want them to come in for a you hearing? I want them to come in for an appointment on September 9th. Unitil. You can invite them and if they want to come, they'll come. Oh, really? Yeah. That's how it works, Regina. Yeah, that's how it works. This is deplorable. Well, this is really deplorable. I work for them, not the utilities, not for town council, so. Thank you. I work for the TV. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Moving like on. To, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just mention, I'd like to know why my name was mentioned. I stood up and abstained from this, removed myself. And there was no reason for my Does name. Does everybody in your condominium sign? Yeah, but that's, that's still no reason for my name to be mentioned. Some okay. people are campaigning around here. Oh, campaigning, really? Yes. Some people should know what they're talking about before they speak. I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. So Who do you talk to? People I don't talk to anymore. We are moving on. Well, what is, what is our resolution here, Mr. <laughs> Chair? We're moving, moving on. on to the town manager's report. You, you, have a, you, have a, you have a tie vote. Nothing's going to be decided with a tie vote. Wonderful. Okay. Basically, basically what's going on here, just so everybody knows. Please, quiet. Please don't talk in this room. You can talk in the hallway. Just so everybody realizes what's going on here is that you have one member of the board who has recused himself because he's a resident in this area. He has a right to do that. He feels like he could be in conflict, and he's recused himself voluntarily. You have four votes on the board on a five-man board. You've already had two votes tonight. Both of them are deadlocked to two. Basically, I would say that this entire matter is dead. And if the person who filed the petition wishes to, they may take it to the superior court. Because the selectmen, basically, by failing to vote, have not taken jurisdiction of this matter. It now goes to the courts if you would decide to file in the courts. You're not going to change the vote, basically. They've taken two votes. So the next step in the statute is to go to the superior court and file a petition, which you will need a lawyer to do. This is ridiculous. Or, or you can agree to have them perhaps do some experimentation to, to <laughs> remove some of the facility. But other than that, those are the only real two options, and the board has voted no against the, uh, against the uh, removal of the facility. So um, the superior court's where you need to go at this point well, by could statute. We, could we make a motion, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Uh, Welch, to require that Unitil remove those pieces, whatever they are. That's what we did, and you voted against it. No. Well, no. Without, yes, we without, made a motion for that, Mr. Without President. four months. Can we ask uh, Unitil, please, to take those pieces off now? They're going period. to do it within 30 days. No, this says four months. No, it says 30 it days. It says four Mr. months. Well, not what she's talking about. What? She's talking about the fact that the motion would be postponed for four months. What she wants to do is vote to have it done now and make it permanent. Right. If they're so smart and they can remove these pieces that aren't glaring into everybody's house, then let them go ahead and do it. This neighborhood didn't ask for That's this. That's what technology. they want to do for 30 in within 30 days, isn't that right, Mr. Gerald? Correct. If the, the, yes. the way they their letter to the board on Friday was that uh, this is what they would agree to do. If the, if the board voted to take them up on that in that way, 
that would be the final resolution. Right. For, and they would have it removed. And if you're not happy, you would have up to four months to complain, and then we would be actually, willing to bring it back and see what we can do. Actually, oh, actually it, uh, the way that Mrs. Woolsey is talking about it now, that would be the final resolution. Right. And if with nothing else removed, yeah, we, that would be the final action of the board. And it will be done within 30 to, days. They won't be able to come back or so what's they can the petition. Form? Someone can petition again to yeah. start the process all, all over again. Over. Within all four over. months. Right. Within four months. So Well, well at any time, actually. If we went at with Mary time. Louise's motion, mm -hmm. then it's done, and then the issue is dealt with. If somebody wants to come in and create a whole new hearing, then they could do that. The way it's written with us is they do it, it gets done, and then if the neighborhood's still not satisfied, they're able to come back on that right. same hearing. Mm -hmm. On the same hearing. A different hearing. hearing. On a, a different they hearing, but they're able to come back. Yes, but you have to, have to petition for a different hearing and start the process all over again. Start the process all over. So it's a, it's a help for them, the four months. Four months is postponing, postponing this. If they know what they should be doing to take these pieces oh, off this please, big contraption, move on. Yeah. why can't move they on. do it now? We'll move on. Why can't they do it now? Move on. That's what they want that's to do. This neighborhood ever a, never asked to have that contraption. And that's what we did with that vote. That's what that's the what motion that was vote. made. No, that it says four that. months. I can read. It postpones any additional stuff. Please. It doesn't no say additional stuff here room. I'm not reading additional stuff I hereby move Mr. to Gerald. postpone for four months the making yeah, please, of any decision Mr. Gerald will you speak and get this clear right. from Mrs. The, Walsley the, the attempt of this motion was to have Unitil do what they have agreed to do but that it's not a final resolution that if this doesn't work the board could take it up again within a few months before the six months time period expired. Right. right. Well, that's how I understand it too, and they'll be able to complain, and then we'll move on and do something different. I, yes. But so that's how it looks to. No, no. With all due respect. Okay. I you hereby move to postpone for four Wilson. months the making of any decision. The making of any decision. Why are we postponing the making of any decision? We could just move okay. to... The town attorney made the motion. Would I know you like that. to reconstruct it? I understand that. Yeah, I would like to reconstruct it. I make a motion that we allow no. you... you had a vote. Regina. Yeah. Had two votes. Well, let's... What do you say, oh. uh, Mark? Move on. Sure. Um. Mark, how can we make it that it's not a stalling tactic... It's By not Unitil, a stalling tactic, if they except feel in your mind, it is, Mrs. Wolf, if right? they feel that My it mind will too. help to resolve the problem by taking those pieces of stainless steel or whatever they are off the confounded contraption, why can't they get up there and do that this That's week? Right. Because they have a schedule for construction, it's especially in the, in the summer season where they have crews that do things in a certain They've order. They agreed in 30 days. And they said they would get it done within 30 days, probably quicker. That's this says four months. No, I no you're four misunderstanding. Months, four months is the making of the decision by the board. We can come back and I look at it again I see nothing about 30 days happy. in here. That's, that's. Why? We can put that in if you want. You've already, uh, within votes third, have already been taken. Well, I no, I, I, I think, you know, if you want it rephrased in that way. Yes. Um, I would say keep it the same and add the phrase, provided that within 30 days the work is done by Unitil. And that's if what was okay going to happen that? anyway. Right. Well, we right. don't know that. I don't now trust don't Unitil any it, farther than else. I can throw them. Okay. We didn't have a problem, the rest of us understand. So I'll make, I'll make a, a, an amendment to that motion that would we you add. The would you wording. restate that, Mark? Sure. Provided? You keep it the same as it is, yeah. but add at the end, provided that the work Unitil has agreed to undertake will be completed within 30 days. And I will make that motion. I'll second it. Any other question? And so that will be the end of September? and then we can hear from the public at our next meeting about what they think. 
If it, well, maybe if it's going to be finished, it's 30 days. They have a pot, days. you know. Oh. It might be finished then. The idea uh, on the part, the idea of, on the part of Unitil in going along with this, and they, they wanted if, in the offer they made Friday, they wanted it to be the final decision that that okay, they will take off these stainless steel plates, and that will be it. I'm not agreeing to that. Well, I'm not suggesting that you do. I'm not suggesting it. This way, he, the way we he proposed it is, if it, that doesn't work, we can still come back and dr address the issue. Correct. Yeah. You give it a bit we, of we time. We can still have the see. ability so within that four months to They're trying to do something to make issue. everyone happy, including the people that aren't here, to take it down. Well, we still want to have the 30 days that council has sure. suggested. Because I don't want to see this stalled and stalled, and we were I talking to, about 30 days. And the we first need time to around. make sure that the removal of those pieces of metal will do the job and get the neighborhood out of the problem. And that's, that's what, exactly what our motion has been about. That's right. For 30 days. Yes. And I like communication from Unitil once this process has been complete, directed to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have all, all of those in us. favor. We yeah. have on the table verbatim from council because I only got to scratch down part of it. Okay. Uh, provided that the work Unitil has agreed to undertake agreed to. will be completed within 30 days. Yes, that's fine. Okay, we have a first. We have a second. All those in favor? Are you? We, Regina's in favor. Are you in um, favor, Mrs. Wolseley? And, and what is Are that? Are you in favor, Mrs. Wolseley? Wait a Wolseley? minute. Wait a minute. Well, I didn't just fall right off the now. turnip truck. Um, <laughs> Councilor, is this, is your uh, additional language to be put in after diminish its visual impact? Yep. Okay, so that would be the end of this paragraph we yes. would... Yes. Okay. How do you vote, Mrs. Walls? Uh, I'm praying and crossing my fingers. I'll okay. go on. We have four it. and one abstention. Thank you, and thanks for coming in, everyone that came in. And we think it is the best answer for you. And, we better and see. Uh, other than that, it's probably going to be turned down, unfortunately, because there are many other people that feel differently, including people that live around the pole, unfortunately. Well, they don't know any more than anybody else. Well, those little we, you know, everybody's are. entitled to their opinion, and there's yeah. been a lot of people that have weighed in on this. I should give them about five minutes. To, yeah. Folks who want to leave can leave. Okay. Is there anyone here for the... Yeah. 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 Those folks who want to leave can leave, so it'll be quiet in here. I'm sorry, Rick. I didn't know you were going to take this. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Oh.
Oh, come on. <laughs> Guys, we're back on TV. Not the state house. <laughs> Next, we're going to continue moving on with old business. Oh, boy. And um, we will be moving on to old business. And the uh, under old business, Regina wanted wait, to... Wait, wait a minute here. Where's, where's M MRI? Yeah, it says they're that, in for yeah, they're, We no. are moving on to old business. We will come to MRI after we have... Talk to Mr. We haven't Nye. done the. Have we done. Yes, report? but someone's sitting here, and we gave everyone else the same um, ability to be courteous to them, and we're going to be courteous to Mr. Nyan now, Mrs. Wolsey. Oh, okay. So, Regina, did you want to open up what you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I wanted to ask if um, we could allow the chamber to use the northeast corner of the municipal lot oh, for yeah. the equipment that bothers the businesses on C Street. So it's not to bother the businesses on C Street. As far as charging rent or whatever, I don't really care either way. But yeah, that uh, John? we're going to talk about this as a. We took a vote. I know. On this whole went on this whole thing. We discussed it. We went through it. We took a vote. The vote was. And Jim, we were told that that man that was here tonight was going to be made whole, pretty much. Mm -hmm. is yes. why I, that's I, how I, I don't took it. I remember that. I don't remember. Well, I'm oh, sorry seriously. that I do. So, where do we go from and here? And the next that day, I got a call from Lenny or an email from Lenny saying yeah. that they were going to have the trash there again. So, therefore, my Monday decision was affected by the Tuesday information yeah. that I found out. So, I'm bringing it up tonight. I believe that. When they came in, they said they were going to they were going to move them back a little bit, but it was going to stay the same. And I believe. Okay, have they moved them back? That's not what I'm hearing. May I address? Yeah, he spoke to us. Well, Come up to the podium. Yeah. For the record, uh, John Nyan with the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'll just. For a point of clarification, on July 29th, I appeared in front of this uh, board uh, to talk about permits. You have to go outside if you want to talk, please. You can't talk in the back of the room, please. Please continue, John. On the 29th of uh, July, I appeared in front of this board um, requesting um, permission uh, to have the Board of Selectmen approve the local town permit, uh, which goes along with all of the other permits that we have to apply for, both state and Department of Transportation, state parks, etc. During that conversation, there was a question made by Selectman uh, Gri um, Excuse me for one second. There, there was a question made with regard to the C Street. Uh, Selectman Barnes indicated um, that she was concerned with the new owners of Sabos. Um, I had indicated at that time that we were planning on coming back on August 12th to talk about the logistics mm -hmm. of the uh, seafood festival, at which point we would have that discussion. Um, you also, Mr. Chairman, during the uh, July 29th, uh, indicated that if somebody was to make a complaint about the C Street parking, that they should put it in writing and send it to the select. I have the minutes of that meeting. Um, I did, at that time, uh, indicate that I would go back and take a look, talk to Chief Sawyer, and, and, and see what could be done. Between July 29th and August 12th, I met with uh, the owners of C Street. I, I reached out to Lenny at Sabos. I left him a, a message for him to call me. Uh, and then um, a week later, after the Board of Selectmen's meeting, I left him a note saying, please call me with a design of C Street, which I have shown to all of you. Yeah. which clearly moves the trash trucks west of Sabos and not in front of their building. Mm -hmm. On August 12th, I came in and I reported on the overall information of the seafood. 
And I once again mentioned the design, and if you recall, Chief Sawyer came in and, <clears throat> and indicated because of safety reasons, we, we should be looking at the vehicles on, on C Street. Once again, I reiterated two things. One was that, in fact, the design that you have on record shows that there is no trucks in front of Sabos on the, his side of the street. On the south side of the street was the favorite foods freezer trucks, which is on the other side of the street. I also reiterated at that time. Are they down below him? No, right across the street. I also reiterated at that time that there are eight businesses on street, C Street, a candy store, and two restaurants, and two hotels. I'm so, yes. I checked, checked with Candy Corner. He has no problems with those freeze trucks aside of his building. I talked to Gary Kubik. He has no problems with the trucks on C Street. I talked to C Street Suites. They have no problems on the trucks on C Street. Where is that, on the side street? On C Street. Yeah. So point being that on the 29th, I'm sorry, on, on August 12th, I reported to this board mm -hmm. that I had gone and had talked to all of the businesses. Last week, I talked to Lenny at Sabos, and I walked him through once again that street design which you have on record showing very clearly there is no trash trucks in front of his property. No trash trucks in front of his property. We had moved them west of his property. So I thought it was the end of the discussion. He wasn't happy about the favorite foods on the other side of the street, mm -hmm. but keep in mind, I have 60 food vendors that rely on those freezer trucks mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. One of, one of the things that, um, so I thought after August 12th, this issue was done, and that we had worked hard to try to come with a solution that would satisfy everybody, not just one owner, but all eight owners of businesses. My re re request for tonight was strictly a annual request to block off the streets that we have always done with the town of Hampton. It was signed off once again by public safety to say this is what we need to do to block the streets and to close the streets down for Seafood Festival. So I had no idea, one, that this subject was going to be brought up again. I stayed because I knew I had to address this issue once again. But at no time did I was I made aware that this subject was going to be brought up again for the third straight selectman's meeting. Mm -hmm. So if this is done this way this year, can you move those trucks somewhere next year so that he doesn't have to take it every single year? The refrigerated. Which is what the other guy was promised before, which never happened. Right. I mean, I think that's fair enough. I mean, uh, those trucks are noisy and they throw off heat and, every, you know, people don't like to be near them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, the best thing I can uh, say is yes, we'll, we will yeah, continue I'm, to try to make improvements. To but we are now 10 days away from the seafood. No, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I, I think if we could say to Lenny that, you know, this is his first year, this, this like was said to the other man, he was told the year before and, and that he never could get rid of that. He was, that's why he sold his business, evidently. Mm. So I think if we felt that he would, it wouldn't always be his burden, maybe that would be a better situation. All I can say, Mr. Chairman, is you have my word that we'll continue to try to make improvements to satisfy all eight business owners on C Street. Okay. So, other comments from the board? Regina? The reason why I got brought up again was because I got communication from a Hampton business owner, and even though it's only one out of eight, and that Hampton business owner actually came in tonight and spoke of, again about how he wasn't happy. Mm. So as far as not, I'm sorry you didn't know the information, but there's plenty of times where I don't find out the information in a timely fashion that I would like to know. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I represent that business owner, and 
I realize it's only 10 days out, but something needs to be done. And I would be willing to allow the town use of property, but that doesn't seem like that's going to fly. It doesn't sound like it's going to fly with John, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I, I don't problem, Mr. Chairman. Let me just clarify a logistical issue. And, I, and I'm sure that Public Works would um, somewhat agree with me. We have 30 to 35 laborers that work the seafood festival. Their job is trash. They keep the seafood festival clean from Friday opening to Sunday when they close. To ask the trash folks to wheel down barrels all the way down the street and across the street on Ashworth Avenue, which could be a safety issue because we have now two-way traffic. I think that that would be a lot to ask without the proper planning and procedure for that to happen. And I don't see that happening within 10 days. Can you assure us that um, the trash will be removed so it doesn't? there's not a bad odor for his business? I'm sure that that's part of your plan. Anyway. For next year. For this year, that there won't be a smell from the trash. All trash smells. Mr. Chairman, I, well. I, I can't guarantee yeah. I mean, by moving the vehicles, and we're going to be looking at the way the trucks will be set up mm -hmm. to make, you know, the wind is, is, is a factor. If, if the wind is blowing from east to west, then there is no odor. I, I, I don't There's have no control of the wind. They're tr emptied every day. Yeah. A public works. And, 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 and as I said, that one of the things that we did do last year, uh, and it was the first time we did it, but we did it was remove the trash trucks right after the, the last dumpster was filled, and we moved them off-site overnight so that there would be no overnight. And then they would come back the next day clean and fresh without any type of trash that would be carried in overnight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are you comfortable with this, Mrs. Wolseley, Regina? Just, just do, do something and get you know, I, I want to say something. When, uh, seriously, ten days before an event takes I place, know, that's one why person, we, that's why we no, no, never one person have, comes in. Never, we took never, a vote. We took a vote. The vote was taken. It was passed. Promised he was going to be held whole, whole, and I don't feel that's happening either. We had the whole diagram that was John, shown to us, and we said, okay, if if you're going to be sure to keep make him happy, and that's what we were told, and I don't feel that that's happening. Right. So I'm you sorry. Know, you, you really I mean, I think I don't think anyone has any chance but to go with it. But next year they won't. Mm. I'm sure of it. Yeah. I wouldn't either. I think next year I would we should not. Use I wouldn't. I wouldn't leave a word next years, year. I would just say no. We've anymore. already lost one business owner from that location. Yeah. Well, if you lose one business owner over one weekend, that that's not a good business. <laughs> well, well, they have three very smart. successful businesses down that beach. Be yeah. so. Well, the problem is it, we feel deceived here at the board. I do, and evidently they you do. Feel what? Deceived mm -hmm. because yeah. we were told he was going right to be. I think they were totally honest with us. They had. A, a, no. they, they were totally they honest here, with us. They told we had us. A diagram. No. Nobody talked. No, about I'm those sorry. Trucks. He. T this we were. Did? We were told no, that something was going to be done. And that we, that we were told the same thing. We had to rush the decision. Next time, I'll not won't be rushing any we decisions. Rushed the decision because we waited a whole. This was two weeks ago, or even more. I don't, I don't even know. I don't want to be here all night, Jim. I know. I know. Let's get it over with. So I, I agree with everything Rick you said. Yes. Yeah. So I think we make. have no choice but to let this go on. But next year, everyone's going to think twice about it. Unfortunately. Well, then you better not think. Better do more than think tw uh, twice. Well, I can't. We'll see who's here next year. Ah, but yes. I personally okay. wouldn't vote for this. I wouldn't say, okay, let's just do it because it's. We'll try to be friendly and right. do it fast because some people are disappointed. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. now and may it's we a black mark on the chamber. May we proceed to the manager's report so we're not here until the morning? So yes. I'm just going to order breakfast. The board of selectmen still has to vote on the uh, closing of the, uh, the roads. Yeah, well, we will make a motion to I make a motion continue. and move that we. I'm going to make the motion and he's going to second it. Okay, we'll do All it. All those in favor? Three, four, and one abstention. Let's Thank make sure you. everybody knows what they voted for now. Thank you, Mr. That Chairman. Was Thank sarcastic. You. Okay. Well, next year I can tell you we won't be voting like uh, what happened this year, evidently. 
Okay. Um, well, so sure. moving on to the town manager's report, or we're going to the assessing department for, for remeasuring relist. Why? What would you like to discuss? Because you asked to discuss it. Yes, I did. I'm going to uh, propose a warrant article for the 2020 warrant. It's been 40 years since this town had a full remeasure relist, and it's about time we got off the dime and did something about it. So I, I would just warn you ahead of time that I will have a warrant article prepared for the 2020 uh, vote to spend some money to get a qualified firm in to do remeasure relist. This MRI stuff is ridiculous. Would you like to talk, Regina? Yes, I have um, questions that. I don't know if anyone from the assessing department or MRI is going to listen. Actually, I've already talked to the assessing department, primarily MRI. Uh, the public hearings are scheduled to start tomorrow. Apparently, they're only going, they're going to be limited to 20 minutes. Appointments, not Appointments, hearing. I'm sorry, are going to start tomorrow, limited to 20 minutes. So I guess we limit the uh, taxpayers. I was wondering how many appointments have been requested and couldn't it be beneficial to extend the hearings by another week? Since we are so late in the process, appointments, the Not hearings, appointments. Okay, appointments for the taxpayers. Um, this year, the MRI report is much more condensed than the vision report was, so it's making it a lot less comparable. Also, I spoke with Charlene this morning, and as of about 11:30 this morning, the vision report online was still not updated with the new values. Uh, she said they hope MRI hopes to do that later today or tomorrow. And I believe that's unacceptable for the town of Hampton taxpayer to be able to go in and look at that before they have a scheduled appointment. Um, I would argue that cutting corners in the assessing department to save money yeah. is not acceptable, is unacceptable. Also, I want to clarify something from the uh, Hampton Beach Village District meeting last week in regards to assessing. I went and I spoke with both Donna Bennett and Ed Tinker helped me out with some reports. Uh, there was a statement made that the Hampton Beach Village District pays one-third of the total town taxes. Uh, I would like to highlight some information in regards to the tax warrants and tax rate percentages for fiscal years 2016, 17, and 18. This is a little lengthy, but I would like this to be on record. And if Ed Tinker listens to this and has anything uh, that doesn't seem right, I would like him to reach out to the board. Fiscal year 2016, the total tax warrant was $52,939,000. Now that would be net of any tax exemptions or um, net of any tax exemptions, or I can't think of the other word right now. The total valuation of the town of Hampton was $3.3 billion. Don't interrupt. I have the floor. Interrupt. Total Hampton Beach Village District valuation was $775 billion, million or 23% of the total valuation. The town of Hampton tax rate in 2016 was 16.08. The precinct rate was 16.82. The partial precinct was 16.15. And estimated taxes, gross of exemptions, totaled 12.5 million, or 24 percent of the total tax warrant. For fiscal year 2017, the total tax warrant was 54,319,000, net of tax exemptions. The total valuation of the town was 3.3 billion. Total Hampton Beach Village District valuation was 775 million or 23 percent. The total tax rate for the town 16.37 percent, precinct rate 17.11 percent, and the partial precinct was 16.545 percent. Estimated taxes, gross of exemptions, total 13.2 million or 24 percent of the total tax warrant. Fiscal year 2018, total tax warrant was 57 million net of tax exemptions, total valuation of the town of Hampton, $3.4 billion, total Hampton Beach Village District valuation, $783 million, or 23 percent, the total tax rate, 17.02, precinct rate, 17.92, partial precinct, 17.09 percent, estimated taxes, gross of exemptions, total $13.9 million for the precinct, or 24 percent of the total tax warrant. For the past three years, the Hampton Beach Village District has averaged about 23% of the total valuation and 24% of the total tax warrant, gross of any exemptions or abatements. So what is the point that you're trying to make about different than the third that you said? Or uh, Yeah, it's understand. not one-third of the uh, total tax. So you're taxes. saying it's less than one-third? It's less than one-third. Less than a quarter. 
Mm -hmm. Did you break it down about how much it's the amount that's actually paid for? That's what the actual tax warrant was, but with the precinct amount, I could only calculate it based on the valuation and the tax rate, which didn't include deducting the exemptions because Ed said it was too hard to mm. back those out of the two pieces. So it would probably be even less if you back the so exemptions. So what do you out. think that that what that equates to the fact that they pay 23% versus 33%? Well, there was a statement made last yeah. week that just wasn't by one of the guests there, one of the oh, Well, no, by one of the commissioners. Commissioners. Yeah, so I went and I, you know, talked to the tax collector in the assessing department and they mm -hmm. gave me the best way to uh Okay, well break that's interesting. Out. Thank you. And uh, hmm. talking about uh, MRI, did you have anything, yeah, Rusty? Uh, um, oh, MRI. For, they they have not done what they should have done, and I'm, my second article for next year's warrant is going to be to put out uh, feelers oh, sure and, uh, according to our personnel policy and advertise. Okay, well, if you're going to do an if you're full time gonna, qualified assessing office. If you're going to do a, a uh, one that's done by a private citizen, then that's fine, but it shouldn't be brought up here, I don't believe. If you're well, I'm, I think citizen. it's about time we did something useful. Well, you can do it on your own. Problem. That's not something that you're going to be talking about it's here. Be a when public, we get. It will be public in a while. Yeah, it will be public, but it won't be a p something that's going to be discussed here at the board unless... Uh, well, it will you know. be discussed when we're talking about warrant articles. Well, aren't you of presenting course. it? Do we usually discuss the uh, private warrant articles? Eventually petition. you do. Yeah. Petition. But it's not... Articles. Yes, it's a petition. It's not necessarily yes. going to be... May we have the manager's report at some point? Mrs. Wolseley, would you please stop it? Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the Global War on Terrorism Monument Memorial Rededication will occur at 6 p.m. on September 11, 2019, 69 High Street in Hampton. That's the American Legion building. Mm -hmm. uh, the public is cordially invited to attend. There will be some refreshments served afterwards. The Ocean Drive Beach Walkway has been revised by the installation of a special mat to allow for safe walking, wheelchair, and stroller movements to the beach. Please call Public Works with any problems you encounter. Uh, the one nice thing about this thing is at the end of the year when it needs to be put away, it can simply be folded up by two people yeah. and carried away and good. stored for the year and it'll be good for next year. No, no Very little maintenance on it. Uh, the listing for all proposed new real, real estate values, uh, not only on the town website, but they're in the assessor's office, which is probably easier to review uh, and ask questions as you review them. Uh, we had the former commander of the American Legion in here tonight to tell us about the Wounded Warriors Hit the Beach program, yeah. which is going to be coming up on Friday the 30th um, for the 12th annual Hit the Beach. Uh, please. Get out of the beach and watch them because it's really something to uh, to uh, to participate in if you can. Um, the construction project on Park Avenue commenced today. The road is being excavated and they're preparing to put in the first set of culverts. Hopefully, the culverts and headwalls will be basically formed up by this coming weekend. Um, Public Works issued a, uh, a memorandum today, a notice to everybody. Labor Day, uh, normal trash and recycling schedule, transfer station will be open. Good. So stick to your normal schedule uh, for this, this coming weekend. Now, Unitel has, and they'll be sending notices out to all the people who own property and their right-of-ways because they're going to be doing insecticide control spraying. Um, you need to talk to them. You need to call Unitel to discuss this matter. If you have some concerns or you wish to make anything known to them, uh, particularly where they shouldn't spray, I'm assuming, because they didn't quite say that, but it's sort of the way things usually go. Uh, it is important that property owners take the effort to get a hold of Unitel and ask any questions. They're going to start at the substation over on uh, Timber Swamp Road and work towards uh, Hampton Falls. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Questions for the town manager, Mrs. Wolseley? Nope. That's Regina? fine. I'm good. Rusty? All set, thank you. Jim? The uh, handicapped parking here at the town hall 
It's I issued an order today because school is open. It's the second order I've issued. Uh, they're going to come in and repaint all those all those spots and move the handicap parking to the west side of the building. Okay. There's also going to be some spots out back that are going to be indicated with no parking so we can get out of the garages out there with the equipment. Oh, great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good. And Rusty? All set. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, and thank you for your report, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, moving on to new business. Number one, we have a 30-day extension request to... DRA for 2019 MSI report. That's one report. The the report uh, is due on September 1st. Uh, it will not be ready because this is a revaluation year. We go through this every time we do a reval. Mm -hmm. uh, we're asking for an extension so the town does not get fined. Any questions? Does yeah. anyone want to make a motion? MRI is ridiculous. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All those in favor? And yeah. against yeah, for the extension. Yeah. You're in favor. I still okay. think it's, uh, unanimous. Yes, yes, I I uh, okay. Number two, we have Hampton's appointment to represent the town to serve on the Commission on Drinking Water, established by House Bill 495, Chapter 29. 329, colon one. Do you want to read the rest of it too? Laws of 2019. Thank you. <laughs> um, so. What do we go, what are we going to do here, Mr. Welch? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you need to make an appointment for someone to serve in that commission. And how often is that going to be? Uh, well, I, they didn't provide me any more information than what you see here on the report. So uh, the commission, once they meet, will establish their dates and they will establish the protocols that are necessary, uh, and they will proceed forward with the legislation under that statute. Okay. I'd like more information, Mr. Chairman. Can we put this on our next agenda? Good idea. Sure. Okay, we will do that. Um, so we'll bring that up the next time, Mr. Walsh. Yeah, absolutely, sir. Good. Next, we have authorized pay raise to part-time employees in building department. Well, it's an employee. Like employee. Employee singular. I'll yeah. move. Also move. I have read the uh, justification. It's actually going to save us money. Yeah, Which I don't is a have good a thing. problem. Yeah, we don't want to lose him. Yeah, definitely. I would second that motion. Yeah. Okay, all those second? in favor? Yes. Unanimous. Good. Next, we have to authorize uh, yep. that one. Authorize town manager to sign seafood festival sidewalk vendor permits submitted after 826. I will so move. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next to five, vote to approve DPW's purchase of Woods Ditch Bank Mower, $12,500, Mr. Welch. Something they have been trying to get for a long time. There are funds available to do that, uh, and they would like to get it done so they can, in fact, do more mowing work in the areas where we are susceptible to flooding. Yeah, excellent. I'll, I'll second. I have a question about that. I, I agree with it, but the funds that are we taking that from the uh, trust funds? No, it's okay. a it's a, uh, a capital reserve fund under yeah. the control of the selectmen. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And um, so, all those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have to vote to release site walk bond for Six Highland Ave, ten thousand five hundred dollars less ten percent. It, it, is, it is approved by the Planning Board and the Public Works Department. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Does anyone have any other new business? Oh. Oh. Okay. You, um, you accept the motion to go into non-public? Uh, uh, some people have old business, oh. new business, actually. Oh. This is a letter that was sent requesting uh, relief from nuisance at 737 Ocean Boulevard. We are writing to request that you direct the proper town officials to stop the following nuisances and harassment for the residents of 737 Ocean Boulevard. First, we would like to give a little history. We are both retired. Two years ago, we sold our home in Atkinson, New Hampshire and brought a house at number five, Second Street to be close to our two daughters who both live in Hampton. 
Shortly after moving into our newly renovated home, it became apparent that our neighbor at 737 Ocean Boulevard was accustomed to using our property for parking and snow removal. The old owner of our home spent winters in Florida and we assume was unaware or did not care. They also have a trailer permanently parked on the property line that houses two motorcycles and they are they're used they used our property to enter and exit the trailer with the motorcycles. To stop the trespassing, we installed a fence along our property line. The fence was professionally installed and after completion was inspected by the Town of Hampton Building Department. As soon as the fence was erected, the harassment from the residents of 737 Ocean Boulevard began. Number one, twice guests of 737 Ocean Boulevard have accosted one of us and threatened us with bodily harm because we had taken pictures of people illegally parked in the fire lane. Both time, the residents of 737 Ocean Boulevard did nothing to stop the assault and in fact supported the behavior by laughing and shouting encouragement. Both times police were called and the second time we were demanded that a police report be filed. Two, the residents of 737 Ocean Boulevard installed at least eight video cameras to the exterior of the, their con to the exterior of their condominium building and some of them are directed right into our home. The residents of 737 Ocean Boulevard have high intensity lights mounted well above the back entrance door all hours of the night, sometimes leaving it on all night. Recently, the residents have installed another high intensity light down so low that the light shines directly into our living and bedroom. We are certain that all the above issues are an attempt to get us to sell our property and move away so they can once again have additional parking and snow storage on our property. Please inform us if we need to do anything additional other than this letter in order to secure quiet enjoyment with reasonable privacy and freedom and noise and confrontation. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Albert Giordano and Sandra Giordano. Um, why is the police department not resolving this? Well, it's been an issue. That's why I'm reading it now. Mm -hmm. And these people are elderly, mm -hmm. and they feel threatened. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot going on here. So I, I don't know. I just noticed now that they did send a copy of this to you, Fred. No, I think you've got it. I've never well, seen it. Well, this is, I don't know what I thought. Several copies that you showed it to me earlier. Yeah, so. well, here. And there's actually a police report, the, the uh, owner of 5 Second Street, hitting 737 Ocean Boulevard's vehicle as she was backing out with a snow shovel. So well, I think that uh, these people are unhappy. talk to the police department. Not exactly friendly. The board of uh, Selectmen mm -hmm. does something. I would expect Is this the same piece of yes, property? Yes, it's the same. Pro yeah, these are different people. have parking spots out front. And yes, but these are different in. neighbors complaining to the same of the same people. The they live next to them. Oh, on the, on this the is another side. neighbor on the street. Why do we have a police department? That's what they want to know. I'd like to hear from the chief on this. Yeah. So it's I think that we should have the chief come in at the next time mm -hmm. and let's discuss this. Will do. Okay. okay. Will do. So put that on the agenda. Will do. And then you can give everyone a copy of. Yes, I will make sure yeah. everybody gets that Thank in their you. mailbox tomorrow. Okay. Okay. And um, did we want to? Yes. Uh, uh, I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Aye. All those Aye. in favor. Aye. Aye. B, F, and X. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs>